Uh, good evening, to doctors, colleagues, and friends. On behalf of Abbott Vascular, I welcome all of you a very warm welcome today evening for a new session of Cardiology Mastermind Module Two and Coronary Bifurcations. I'm Kalyan Goswami, Regional Head, South and East. We will commence today's session by introducing our four very respected and eminent co-directors who has worked together to put the program up for all of us and um, made it extremely interesting and practical for everyone. I would like to in welcome uh, Professor Dr. D. S. Chadda for our first, who is our first course director of Cardiology Mastermind Module Two. Professor Dr. D. S. Chadda is a senior consultant cardiologist at Astor R. V. Hospital, uh, Bangalore. He is the former professor and H. O. D. Medicine, Command Air Force Hospital, Bangalore, and the former professor F. M. C. Pune. Professor Dr. D. S. Chadda has an overall experience of nearly three decades in interventional cardiology. He is a renowned proctor for coronary complex intervention. Intracoronary imaging and physiology, rotational uh, atherotomy, TAVR, leadless pacemakers, and has numerous publications to his name and has been a part of various clinical trials as well. He is also an invited faculty for various national and international uh, forums. Uh, our second uh, course director, uh, Professor uh, Dr. B. C. Srinivas, uh, he is a professor and HOD, Sri Jayadeva Institute of Cardiology and Research, Bangalore. Professor Srinivas has performed more than 15,000 interventional procedures. And is the present national president of Indian College of Cardiology, and is very well known for his initiative in organizing various academic sessions. So, Dr. B. C. Srinivas is not uh, here in this program in today's event, uh, but he has been an eminent and an important formulating the entire event. Uh, our third course director is Professor Dr. Ajay Swami. He is a professor in HOD uh, Cardiology, Command Hospital, Air Force, Bangalore, and is a former professor of cardiology, AFMC Pune. Professor Dr. Uh, Swami has been associated with Armed Forces Medical Services since 1992 and currently holds the rank of Air Commodore. He is working in the field of medicine for the past 28 years and has an experience of nearly 20 years in cardiology. He is presently the HOD and consultant cardiology and professor of medicine at Command Hospital Air Force, Bangalore. Uh, our fourth uh, course director is Professor Dr. Ranjan Chetty. He is a professor in HOD Cardiology, Manipal Heart Foundation, Bangalore. He is the former professor and HOD of Cardiology, Kastuba Medical Hospital, uh, Medical College, Manipal. He is well known for his academic sessions and a renowned proctor for various uh, device implantation. He has numerous achieved numerous awards and recognitions right from his medical school and has organized various academic sessions during this career as a teacher. So uh, I don't see Dr. Uh, Ranjan Chetty here. I will request uh, Dr. Chadda to probably take over the session and introduce the uh, rest of the, the faculty here, and then we can proceed on with the meeting. Dr. Chedda, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Kalyan. I think um, uh, the moderator for this uh, module does not need any introduction. Dr. Sangatuvel, he is uh, interventionist par excellent, and he does anything and everything from head to toe, if I'm right, Dr. Sangatuvel. And he is a path breaker in uh, many of the uh, uh, interventional uh, procedures. So we are uh, really privileged to have him as a, the moderator. And um, he works at the Apollo Hospital uh, Chennai, and he has a lot of uh, things to his credit. So I, I, without going into much details of that, and I, as I told, he does not need any further introduction. I'll request Dr. Sangatuvel to introduce the panelists and take the proceedings uh, forward for uh, today's session. So, thank you, Dr. Shara. Thank you, everyone. And uh, welcome to this, uh, this mastermind on bifurcations. So uh, today, uh, uh, we have a very eminent faculty. And, uh, uh, we have, uh, as was discussed, uh, we have uh, 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 the course directors. And now, uh, I would like to uh, Extend a warm welcome to all the participants. And I think Dr. Ranjan has yet to join. A few of them are yet to join. Uh, but uh, what is, should we go ahead with the live case or uh, how is it? Can you tell me uh, whether we should proceed the live case or we should go with the, the first presentation? Uh, I think there are some yeah. audio issues. If they've been sorted out, then we can go ahead with the live case. If not, then we'll start yeah, with the live case. So let us go with the first presentation. Okay. Uh, Kalyan, I can hear it speak. I think the live case may be ready. Oh, and maybe we can start a discussion among ourselves. And I think uh, uh, then as soon as they are ready, we can uh, start with the live case. 
So, uh, Dr. Chadha, if we will just start a discussion. Uh, so, how do you uh, initiate when you look at a bifurcation? Uh, how do you assess the bifurcation the angiogram? And uh, uh, when do we uh, know whether it's a significant uh, bifurcation? And uh, 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 let's start with that. And, uh, how do you make an assessment initially by angiogram? And then so, begin, uh, what I, I think will be right, Dr. Sangatuvel, is that I, I can start with my talk because it discusses all these aspects only. So fantastic! I can. That'll be good. Uh, yeah, we can start Go. with the talk. It will take fifteen minutes, and I will, yeah. uh, you know, um, yeah. finish my talk, and thereafter. Uh, all the technical glitches from the Hyderabad will be sorted out, and we can go to them live. What do you, uh, what do you say, Kalra sir and Ajay? Yeah, yeah, I think because you will need the diagrams and all, and uh, I think it's best, and it'll avoid repetition later. All right, we can sir. Go on to the talk. Yeah, yeah go ahead. Sounds good. Sounds good. Since it is already uh, scheduled, so let's. All right, sir. I'll just share my screen and start the talk. Are my slides uh, visible? Yeah, yeah, yes. Perfect. All right, all right. Okay. Um, I, I think uh, uh, we are going to have a very nice case coming up from uh, Hyderabad. Um, so, it, because of certain technical issues, that is not happening as of now. So, I, I will start with uh, my talk, which is on tips and tricks for uh, bifurcation angioplasty. So um, we get to see in about 15 to 20 percent of patients who come to us for angioplasty bifurcation lesions and uh, intervention in these patients is complex as well as challenging. Uh, provisional stenting strategy is the preferred uh, mode of treating these patients but in about 25 to 30 to 30 percent of these patients we need two stent uh, techniques. So uh, the challenges of bifurcation uh, lie in the fact that there are certain anatomical issues which relate to the plug burden, the diameter of the side branch, the bifurcation angle and there are certain dynamic changes which happen during the procedure. You know these dynamic changes are there is a plug or a carinal shift and while you're performing this procedure there might be some dissections uh, and, and they change the, you know, the entire uh, connotation of the procedure. So they can be a switch over from a single to a two stent strategy. Overall, the bottom line is that the side branch is the weakest link of bifurcation plasty. And because there's uh, considerable re stenosis in the side branch, which is to the tune of nearly 20%, despite using drug eluting stents. And also, uh, you get to see a lot of stent thrombosis, and the rates reported are nearly 4% uh, at the end of uh, nine months if the procedure has not been done uh, in an optimal uh, fashion. So let us look at some of the anatomical uh, uh, assessments, uh, tools for anatomical assessment of the side branch, which is really, really important. So you can assess the side branch anatomically by using the angiogram or you can use the coronary CT. Coronary CT is coming up not being used uh, as much as it is being used for CTO lesions and uh, of course coronary imaging which essentially uses the IVUS and uh, OCT. Well, um, I, I will not go into the details of classification because everybody is aware we use this uh, classification for finding out whether we are dealing with a true bifurcation or a pseudo bifurcation. So uh, we have assigned uh, the nomenclatures of zero and one, zero implying less than 50% and one more than 50%. And depending on the site of blockage, we classify the lesions by this. And um, uh, distal main, mind you, is the a vessel which has the larger diameter. So the one which has got a smaller diameter becomes the side branch. So by definition, it's not the uh, the uh, continuation of the proximal main into the, so if it's a left main, uh, I mean LED diagonal or OM uh, or OM bifurcating in two side branches, the distal main will be the one uh, which has got a larger diameter. So when you look at the side branch, you need to look whether it's a true bifurcation or not. And then you look at the side branch length, the calcium load, the side branch diameter, the 
I, I mean the takeoff of the branch and the severity of the lesion. And most importantly, and not the least, is the myocardial viability. So each branch has to be supplying a viable chunk of myocardium. Then only it is worth uh, chasing. So um, let me uh, talk a little bit about bifurcation angle and its uh, applied significance in case of bifurcation angioplasty. Here you see this is uh, the proximal angle, or the angle A is the angle between the proximal main and the and the side branch, and it determines the access to the side branch. So this is the angle uh, which determines how easy it is to access the side branch. Angle B is the bifurcation angle or the distal angle. It is the angle between the distal main and the side branch. And this is the angle which determines the side branch occlusion. So uh, when we talk whether post angioplasty, there will be some plaque carinal shift, it is based on this angle that we uh, formulate our plans. And the carinal angle is between the crossing lines of the proximal uh, main vessel line before it, uh, before the branch point or, and the side branch. So um, let's look at the bifurcation or the distal uh, angle B or the bifurcation angle. So if the bifurcation angle is wider, that is, it is more than 60 degree, it is best dealt with TAP. And mind you, this, this um, is associated with early atherosclerosis and inadequate stent expansion if you're using DK crush or any other technique. So if you have a 90 degree angle and you're doing a DK crush, there can be chances of malapposition on the side branch uh, side of the uh, stent. Whereas narrow angles are associated with uh, kissing balloon failure because the entry becomes very difficult. You will not be able to push your hardware in. There are high chances of carinal shift. And if you have not optimized the uh, stents well, there are also very high risk of uh, stent uh, thrombosis. The other interesting thing about the um, bifurcation anatomy is the pluck distribution. And in this context, I would like to draw your attention to a was based study for the distal left main. And this clearly showed, number one, that the pluck distribution is not affected by the bifurcation angle. And if you have a distal left main disease, in about 90%, it will involve the left main. 68% circumflex will be involved, and both the arteries are involved in 62%. And if all the three branches are involved, you have much higher rates of uh, TLR. Well, uh, we get to see a lot of isolated uh, LAD and circumflex uh, diseases. Now, what is important here is that one should remember that isolated LAD disease is seen only in 9.3% and isolated circumflex disease is seen only in 17%. So in the rest of the patients, the LAD osteal plaque will certainly be extending on to the left main. Or in isolated circumflex disease, in nearly 80%, the plaque will extend on to the left main. So you have a very high risk of geographical mismatch if you do isolated osteal stenting of LAD or uh, circumflex. And if you have a longer left main, you will certainly have more chances of distal left main disease. So the um, the definition criteria which was used for bifurcation, it classified it into simple and complex. And this was essentially based on the lesion length and certain and plus any of the other two factors which included multiple bifurcation, presence of thrombus, residual vessel diameter less than 2.5, multiple lesions, severe calcium, bifurcation angle more than 70 or less than 45 degrees. So one should remember that no two bifurcations are identical and one needs an individualized approach to any given case. Well, the other important thing for the side branch is the physiological assessment, which we must keep in mind. And this is really, really important because uh, we would like to assess us or uh, treat a side branch which is supplying a viable chunk of myocardium. And, uh, you know, there, there, there's been a lot of work in this and there is something called uh, fractional myocardial uh, mass, uh, which is the amount of myocardium vis-a-vis -vis the entire uh, uh, LV mass as to we calculate the percentage and uh, there is there are a lot of CCTA based uh, studies on uh, this and uh, what these studies have shown us that um, uh, okay the slide all right okay uh, one sec so what these studies have shown us is that if you have a, a, a relevant or a side branch which has a length of more than 73 millimeters then it is found to be clinically significant. So uh, this is based on CCTA. And um, what, in addition, we've uh, got to know from the fractional myocardial mass is that 
we have different branches which have got different uh, clinical significance. So look at the significance of a diagonal branch where we attach a lot of meaning. So it does does not supply a great chunk of myocardium and we always end up chasing uh, this branch and doing uh, while doing the bifurcation in LED D1. So overall this um, uh, paper in the Jack intervention in 2016 demonstrated that it's only 20% of the non-left main bifurcations which uh, you do uh, have side branches supplying more than 10% of uh, fractional myocardial uh, mass. Well, uh, FFR or IFR has emerged as a very important tool and uh, it should be used uh, for assessing the viability of the myocardium being supplied by uh, uh, the side branch. So it is recommended to do FFR for short discrete lesions and you should not attempt to do it for uh, very severely tortured, severely calcified uh, vessel with multiple stenosis where there is always a risk of uh, dissection. And uh, while, while doing the FFR, you should also uh, keep the fact that the, the proximal uh, stenosis in the main branch can have an effect. So you must nullify that. So uh, what clinical studies have shown that if you apply FFR, majority of these side branches are found to be insignificant, especially in the, uh, in the LED and circumflex uh, territory. And uh, mind you, while uh, doing uh, this FFR, and if you've decided to do a provisional strategy, never use this wire for jailing the side branch. It is absolutely not recommended. And once you've done the angioplasty, FFR is yet a very important tool for assessing the uh, residual ischemia and to find out whether you've uh, done the job well or not. Well, if you have, while doing the procedure, created slow flow or severe dissection, then absolutely uh, don't use FFR to assess the uh, side branch. And um, the other important thing is that it does not predict the uh, outcome. <laughs> Just for assessing the it not it cannot be used as a tool for follow up. Well, now let's look at the uh, stenting techniques. Can this can the background noise be muted, please? Well, uh, as per the guidelines, provisional stenting is class 1A, whereas uh, two stent technique still is around class 2A. I'll not go into the details because Ajay is going to cover all this. Let's look at the um, few tips and tricks while doing a provisional stenting. But, well, you need to pass a wire into the side branch. It's very important to jail the side branch because uh, it favorably modifies the side branch angle and it also helps you, it facilitates re-entry in case the side branch closes down. It acts as a landmark and can help you advance the balloon under the stent in case the side branch is completely closed. So this is what uh, it helps you do. Uh, in this given uh, cartoon, you can see that the side branch is kind of closed. So you can slide a balloon in, open the side branch, take the wire out and rewire it, and then optimize it by uh, going through the uh, struts into the side branch. And uh, you can even, if the side branch is very uh, significant, you can do an inverted crush, or you can even do a, a culotte in uh, these cases where you need to bail out the side branch. There is also a new technique, which is called the jailed corsair technique. You corsair is a microcatheter, which can be put into the side branch. After implanting the uh, main branch stent, the corsair catheter can then be removed. It basically facilitates by re-entry and also prevents the uh, uh, occlusion of the side branch. There is a new technique called JBT or the jail balloon technique where a semi-compliant balloon is parked into the side branch. The important fact here to remember is that the uh, balloon which has been put in the side branch should be about one or two millimeters extending beyond. It's a long balloon and it should extend beyond the main branch uh, stent. So both are inflated and stent is generally deployed at suboptimal pressures and thereafter the main branch uh, side branch balloon is removed. The, these techniques basically, uh, jail corsair and jail balloon techniques facilitate plaque uh, redistribution around the main and the side branch and facilitate in keeping the side branch patent. Well, the second rule is lesion preparation. Generally, we if we are not stenting the side branch, we don't uh, pre-dilate because there is no guarantee that if you dilated this and post main branch stenting, it will uh, stay patent. And most importantly, if you induce dissection and if you cause slow flow, then you're committed, then you'll have to cross over to two stent uh, technique. 
Well, uh, the other important thing is that if you've done the side branch ballooning, then uh, you should not try and rewire and chase it again because there are bright chances that you can dissect and completely uh, stop the uh, flow. But if it's a planned side branch uh, stenting, then you can uh, prepare the bed well, and it is very strongly recommended that you do that. So uh, if I'm doing a two stent technique as is shown, then I can use any kind of device. Generally, the choice of balloon is uh, a NC balloon, and the diameter should be 0.5 millimeters smaller than the size of the side branch. And you can use cutting, scoring balloons. And if there is calcium, very often, which we see in the distal left wing, we also use rotablation. Well, uh, Ajay will cover this, but the uh, important fact here to remember is when you choose a stent, choose it as per the distal uh, uh, main diameter, and then you optimize it. And while optimizing, uh, most important fact is that your balloon placement has to be very, very uh, carefully done. It should not go into the distal uh, main branch because if you do that, you will cause carinal shift and this will be like choosing a stand diameter equivalent to the proximal main branch. So this uh, really helps because it reduces the number of cells covering the side branch and it also enlarges the cells so that your re-entry of the guide bar is facilitated. Why do we do pot? Because it optimizes the main branch uh, results. It uses the obstruction, reduces the obstruction of the side branch, and which facilitates the wire tracking and the stents to go across the uh, branch. Well, it is always very important to know the stent maximal expansion capacities. It's there in all the IFUs. You must, it's strongly recommended that for all the stents, you should have this chart in the cath lab so that you can use this chart and blow up stents uh, to their larger uh, recommended uh, sizes. Well, can we predict the side branch occlusion while we are doing bifurcation? There are certain predictors of side branch occlusion, which include the diameter stenosis of the side branch and the bifurcation core. If the bifurcation core is very severely stenosed, then there are very bright chances that this plaque, uh, plaque might uh, shift. And if you have uh, plaque burden or calcium on the main branch opposite to the side branch, there are very bright chances that Calcium will cause carinal shift and the plaque burden will cause plaque shifting into the side branch ostium. And if you start with a low Timmy flow rate and you have a very increased bifurcation angle, all these uh, are predictors of side branch occlusion. Well, um, how do you bail out? You can bail out before deployment of the main vessel stent. And that is if you've done pre while preparing the bed, the side branch occludes, then you, it's best to switch over to a two stent technique. And if uh, after doing the main vessel stent, the side branch gets occluded, then also you can uh, bail out the side branch by using either the inverted crush or a culotte technique, which I already told you. So uh, most importantly, you must always keep the wire in the side branch, which is very, very important. Well, I've already told you this. There are different ways you can do. So there are different techniques. So I, I leave uh, Ajay to dwell with these techniques. But you can bail out an occluded side branch uh, uh, after or before the main branch uh, stenting. And these are the techniques which are mentioned in the slides, uh, which you can follow and uh, do. But uh, does bailout change the clinical outcome? But I have, while doing a bifurcation and I lose a side branch and I do a bailout, does it change? We have a nice data set which comes from P2B2 registry, where they looked at MACE rates at the end of one year with one and two stent technique. And mind you, uh, bailout technique was associated with the MACE rates, which was 2.2 folds higher. So, I mean, this brings home uh, the fact that if you are planning your intervention, you must go with the right technique to start with, because if you, whatever you do, if you do a bailout, you will feel happy that you, uh, you know, kind of rescued the side branch, but the outcome or the MACE rates are still very high. Well, in two-stand technique, the choices uh, are... Uh, uh, multiple and um, I, I will not go into the de details. So when you're doing the two stent technique, you have to have the side branch access. It's uh, different ways one can do it. You can use a third wire. If you want to use two wires, you can switch the main and the side branch wires. Hydrophilic wires help you if you're not able to get in. 
and um, the coil wires have better steerability. If you can increase the stiffness of the wire, if you're not able to get into the side branch, you can use a Miracle 3 gram or a Pilot series of wire. They give you good access. And uh, there, are, there are different techniques which you can use for a difficult uh, side branch. If the side branch uh, uh, takeoff angle is greater than 90 degrees, you can use a reverse wiring technique as is shown in the slide. You can create a loop in the branch, get into the main uh, branch, and then while pulling back, the wire will automatically prolapse into the side branch. And if you have subocclusive uh, stenosis, then you can balloon, and there are uh, cases where uh, rotablation has been done because it creates the space for the wire to uh, turn, and uh, uh, you can also enlarge the vessel. So this is how you can proceed. You can do a pullback. You can use a softer wire. You can use a reverse wire technique, pre-dilate, use rotablator, or use microcatheters with dual lumen to cross or reshape the wire. So there are multiple ways where you can, uh, multiple techniques which you can adopt to get into the uh, side uh, branch. Well, in two stent technique, it's very important to finish with uh, kissing. And at times you pass the wire and you're not able to get through, then it is always advisable to use smaller profile balloons. You even have now one millimeter balloon. You can use one, 1.25 or 1.5 millimeter balloon. Open the cells and that will give you access. And at times you are still not able to go, then it's a uh, few tips for that. You can use a guide extension catheter, bring it as close to the side branch as possible. That will give you a good uh, push or the pushability of the balloon increases. You can also use an anchor technique wherein you put a balloon in the main branch, a small balloon which anchors your guide catheter and increases the pushability of the hardware into the side branch. Kissing is one of the most important uh, steps because it optimizes the side branch ostium. It prevents the subacute stent thrombosis and it prevents TLRs in the uh, uh, long term. Sorry. So uh, what do we use for kissing is generally we can use the either the stent, the size of the stents which you use, the balloon size can match the stent sizes, or it is two third of the proximal reference, NC balloons are preferred. You have to do a sequential high pressure followed by simultaneous nominal pressure, which is very, very important. And it's always nice to inflate the side branch first. And what I would like to stress here is that when you are inflating your balloons into the stents, you must stay for about 20 seconds, if not 30 seconds, because it's very important for them to be uh, opposed well onto the uh, vessel wall. Well, when you do a kiss, you uh, kind of make the proximal segment elliptical. So it is nice to do a pipe, uh, what we described now as pot side pot, as is shown in the slide. You finish with the kissing and then you do a first pot, then a kissing, and then you finish with the second pot so that the elliptical deformity is removed and you can make the stent round again. Imaging has got increasing application in uh, the uh, bifurcation angioplasty. It gives you the vessel size, plaque distribution, bifurcation angles, and as to uh, the health of the side branch, you have certain predictors of side branch compromise, which includes uh, BTCT as well as the carinal tip angle. I will not go into the details because there are multiple sessions on which these things are being taught and one should be aware. And if one has the provisions of using imaging, one should use the side branch compromise, as I told you, can be because of the carinal shift, which, uh, or it can be because of the plaque shift. And either of these two uh, can be predicted by uh, adopting imaging. So you have to be well prepared. And if the imaging tells you that there is there are chances that your side branch is going to get compromised, you must take step in advance. Post PCI, you will get to see the expansion of your uh, stent. And there are different um, parameters which uh, which have been found clinically to be associated with lower rates of restenosis. Those MSAs should be chased. You also pick up some uh, complications like malaposition, dissections, and plaque prolapse. So uh, I mean, um, it is very, very prudent to use especially imaging when you're doing a left main segment because uh, this will help you uh, kind of optimize the results and get good long-term results. Hard hardware handling, especially when you're doing a left main is very, very important. And this given case example shows you how a guide catheter while taking out or moving the, uh, either you are, while you are taking out the jailed uh, wires or you are taking out the wing balloons can cause longitudinal compression of the stents. So be very, very careful of uh, this while doing uh, your left main uh, stenting. Well, 
there is, of course, a difference between left men and non left men, and left men bifurcation deserve more attention because suboptimal results are absolutely not uh, acceptable. And this is one segment where you have about uh, crossover of uh, nearly 30 to 40 percent. So there is more chunk of viable myocardium being supplied and uh, a bigger chunk of myocardium being supplied by the left main segment. So one should be uh, doing the left main segments with uh, more carefully. Well, to summarize the key messages which I have to give is that uh, 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 you must review your angiogram. You must try the provisional strategy of the anatomy Prevents, uh, permits because this is a strategy which is associated with very good outcomes. If you are learning or trying to do two stent technique, you must master only one technique to begin with rather than trying uh, different techniques so that you develop uh, confidence. And uh, one should remember that the complex stenting strategy is associated with longer procedure time, more X-ray exposure and increased contrast users and biomarker elevation. And uh, this has to be factored in. Final kissing balloon is a must with two stent uh, technique and there are its advantages have been demonstrated. And most importantly, if you feel insecure about the procedure, call for help. Don't perform an intervention just to prove a point. You must learn these steps, the steps of different uh, bifurcation angioplasties under guidance. So the choice of treatment to conclude is based on the lesion characteristic, risk stratification and the operator experience. Uh, plaque modification plays a very, very important role. And whenever possible, one stent is to be preferred. And if you're doing a two stent, kissing is very, very important. Uh, well, it takes time to learn the procedure. And please don't ever be in hurry to do uh, anything to prove a point. Thank you so much for your patient hearing. Thank you, Dr. Chadda, for an excellent talk. I'm yeah. sorry I joined a little late. So let me do the introduction of all panelists and then you know we'll go for discussion. And Dr. Kasturi is probably ready for this. So it's my honor and privilege to introduce first Dr. Sengatuvelo. I'm told he's already been introduced. He doesn't need any introduction. He's a very good friend of mine. And uh, everybody knows him in um, Chennai yeah, doing a lot of structural intervention. And, uh, you know, he's been a course director. And the list is actually very huge. But uh, I'm sure everybody knows you, Dr. Sekatuvelo. Welcome to this. And we are all eagerly waiting for your expertise. The other faculty which we have is Dr. Sridhar Pasturi, who is going to do the live case. And he's going to do a step-by-step -step explanation. He's one of the masters of... Uh, uh, you know, imaging, he was probably one of the very early adapter of uh, OCT, just like Dr. Sengatuvelu. So he also has a huge experience in doing aortic stent graft and uh, he's done innumerable intervention. Welcome, Dr. Uh, Sridhar Pasturi, and we'll be waiting for your discussion just after this. And then we have Dr. Uh, D.K. Barua, whom I have met in, um, uh, you know, uh, in Vizac and he's a consultant in Apollo for Vizac. Again, a, a senior cardiologist with a huge experience. Uh, thank you for joining us, Dr. Barua. Uh, we have Dr. Deeman uh, Kahali, who is from BM Barla, Calcutta. Uh, welcome, Dr. Uh, Deeman, and thank you for joining the, uh, today. You have been a, a PI in multiple trials, and we have gone through some of your trials. Thank you for joining us uh, today. Uh, uh, we have also, we have Dr. Ravi Kaldra, who is from Pune. Uh, thank you, sir, for uh, joining today. He has more than 25 uh, uh, years experience in international cardiology. Well-known name, and most of us have, you know, grown up uh, hearing your name, uh, Dr. Kalra. So with this, I welcome everybody, and I'm sure there are many participants. We had a great response last time. I hand over the discussion to Dr. Sangatuvelu to moderate the live session and, uh, you know, call in Dr. Kasturi. Thank you, Dr. Venjin. It's really a proud privilege to be part of this program on this exciting and very interesting program with a very, very nice and uh, uh, very friendly faculty. But let me uh, go ahead with Dr. Uh, Dr. Chada gave a wonderful, very crisp talk uh, uh, highlighting all the important aspects uh, and the tips and tricks of bifurcation. Uh, I think I want to highlight uh, one important point of what he said for, for uh, uh, the non left main bifurcations, which only 20% of them are actually. Uh, significant, I mean, the side branch are significant enough to supply uh, at least 10% of the functional myocardium. This is a very important take home point because many of us, uh, we try to do more aggressive uh, strategies for particularly for the bifurcation. Try to do boost and uh, be active to treat the bifurcation. But we have to understand that 
many of the small branches are not functionally significant and probably a one stand technique or provisional technique should be the focus first consideration and particularly in lawn left main bifurcation that's an important point other than that i think uh, he pointed out many things i just want to add a few points the kissing balloon it's very important now the latest ebc guidelines recommend a very short uh, length of the balloon for kissing balloon <laughs> to increase the length of the balloon the shaft the main branch uh, the time main branch is going to become more elliptical as pointed out by dr chara so short, it's a short and uh, non compliant uh, balloon for kissing and uh, as far as the, the the one more point is crossing again uh, i think uh, dr ajay swam will be talking about it more but depending on the technique uh, one should consider crossing a distal most strut particularly when you consider positional strength i think we can discuss more after ajay's talk and after the, the live case and uh, uh, the other thing is the uh, the left main uh, post imaging so you are talking about the 5678 uh, uh, so that is more now with, with the, la the last excel trial data from the ivs uh, trials we learned that Uh, the five six seven eight rule means you get a final uh, stent area of five in the circumflex, six in the LAD, six in the seven in the point of contact, and eight in the left main. Uh, it was more applicable. Uh, it applies to more uh, Asian population, and for Western population, they now recommend a uh, 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 six, eight, ten, ten the main left main, uh, which we should also apply particularly when you have a large built uh, person with a large build, and we should consider getting the. Uh, the, M the MSA uh, as large as possible, and uh, I think with these small things, I would quickly ask uh, comments from Dr. Uh, Kahali and uh, Kadra as we move forward to the live case. Uh, Dr. Kahali, you want to make any comment? Yeah, thank you, uh, Dr. Sangar Develu, and I greet everybody. Good evening to everybody. It was nice seeing the case from Dr. Chadda as usual, and he, like a master teacher, has shown us. how to do the bifurcation you know and he was really perfect in all his aspects like placing the balloon during first part proximal to the center that's very uh, important because that not only you know if it is not properly placed and the distal end of the pot balloon crosses the pro in proximal end or ostium of the side branch then what happens the stem starts go inside the you know cap ostium of the side branch and that causes deformity and narrowing of the ostium and also the opposite wall which is very nicely shown in the oct and in a meeting on last sunday also was showing a beautiful picture that how the stent struts in the opposite wall comes out of the wall and there is the increased chance of thrombogenicity in future so these are very important and also if we cross the side branch lumen and you know then the sizing is not pertinent and the size of the distal portion of the vessel main vessel gets more dilated like proximal segment and that causes further narrowing of the side branch lumen so these are the various uh, you know things regarding the pot he has shown how to do the repot after the final kissing balloon and it's very important according to ebc guideline which my friend dr sengoto velu has rightly pointed out that the protrusion of the balloon in the main vessel from the side branch and also the main vessel should be very little and it should be moderate pressure and individual sequential high pressure should be done and it should be starting with side branch so these are very important issue and any deviation from the standard teachings may cause problems i think thank you very much dr chadda i really appreciate your great lecture uh that kind of fantastic very very well covered uh, all aspects and i am sure we'll get another treat from ajay swami who, who will uh, tell us the various techniques uh, just one point you see uh, you mentioned the importance of final kissing balloon but i think it is equally important to do a good repot at the end a final pot uh, because we do find an elliptical shape and unless you've been very careful with the size of the balloons so a repot i think is as important as a final kissing balloon absolutely After, absolutely yeah and uh, another thing is uh, the ffr you mentioned uh, when do you do it i would uh, probably do it after pca to the main vessel if it's a provisional strategy because uh, there's so much as you said so many dynamic changes take place after the first vessel is tackled that uh, the first ffr may not be of much value 
has got value for assessment of side branch if you have to assess the side branch whether it helps you choose one stent two stent so it is important to do pre for the side branch that is fact number one sir if you are doing ffr post procedure then if you want to do it for the main branch and find out whether there you you've uh, done good uh, work or not then there are studies which say that you have to achieve a ffr value of greater than 0.91 anything less than that is considered to be leaving residual ischemia behind and this yeah. is for patients who are not recovering from acs ckd or diabetes in diabetics and ckd patients an ffr value of 0.86 is considered to be adequate after the main vessel stenting so i i mean ffr has got value everywhere i mean for the main yeah. and the side branch to begin with in bifurcation most important to find out whether this side branch is uh, supplying a viable myocardium or it's uh, whether the stenosis is significant enough or not you must do ffr but the important message from ebc is that use it only for discrete lesions don't use it for lesions where there is uh, you know multiple segmental stenosis where there is thrombus where there is calcium because the this wire is not as friendly as the other wires which you use and the yeah. chances of detection are very high okay thank you thank you for uh, and there is a nice article from antonio colombo you know where they have mentioned and also latif ajiz that if the ffr you know there is a corresponding relation and if the lesion is less than 75% the side branch osteo lesion normally it is found that the ffr is more than 0.8 so there has been a, and it has been none other than in 500 odd cases and normally it happens and if there is tm3 flow and the side branch osteo looks to be 50 60% stenosis we can ignore ffr of the side vessel because tm3 flow it has been found in multiple studies with good uh, angiographic and ffr correlation that if the stenosis is not very significant 90% or like that it doesn't mean and there is tm3 flow it's sufficient flow is there so it's important that always we don't have to go for left pain side branch you know ffr thank you now uh, let us go for the live case of dr shridhar kasturi is ready i think we should just start up the case so let me on time to finish the proceeding technical team the image is a little dark can we lighten it up a little bit or is that on purpose kalyan are you hearing us Dr. Kasturi, can you hear us? Dr. Kasturi? Uh, now connected. Uh, are you able to hear? Yeah, no, yeah, we are. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We can hear, sir. Please yeah, proceed with the case. Yeah. And once you are uh, you through, whenever you feel, you can just tell us. And Ajay Swami can start the lecture whenever you uh, want to pause. So you can tell us. Uh, we can proceed whenever you, you are ready. Yeah, go ahead, please. Okay. Uh, now, uh, go to the first, uh, first view. let me start now at this to the by introducer let me are you able to hear i am starting now just to go to the first view we are, we are able to hear you very hello, well and also we can see awesome. you all well uh, hello all your ppt is uh, ready for yeah, able to hear go ahead please we got this one we can hear you dr shridhar we can hear you diagonal wire tip the Dr Sridhar No connectivity brother We can hear you Dr Sridhar Doctor uh, one minute doc uh, like we are uh, checking with the output give us a minute Yeah make sure they are not uh, you know sometimes they may not hear us if uh, the their speaker is a problem connected eh huh? 
can we see the fluoro at least hello i think they are not able to hear us that's a problem i think yeah that's some technical problem now able to hear dr kasubi can you hear us we can hear you can you hear us yeah some disturbance transmission disturbance fc give fc Or anyway, we you can, can hear you. Why don't you tell us what you can you can you ask him to talk on presentation so not that he did not interfere with us, but he, we can hear him. I am very sorry. I am unable to hear your voice. Is there a lot no, no, of disturbance? No, no. You just go ahead and present. Tell him to present. Can you call? Can you technical team? Can you call? Him, ask him to present the case. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. The quality is informed. Quality is informed. Just as long as we can, we are fine. well they are they able to hear i will talk just huh this is a 65 year old male just to find out are they able to hear ha uh, yeah. can hear this him. is a 65 year old male yeah we are very you are clear on the pangena of three months duration hepatangina and episodes of rest angina known hypertensive no history of diabetes non smoker and he underwent pca of right coronary that was about 5 years ago with the des and uh, because the recent of uh, recent onset angina we did angio evaluation angio shows just to show the first view uh, initial angiogram there was a uh, mild uh, pressure damp was the there so Can because that the uh, show these uh, different views that see the ostium there was haziness there is a, a lesion in the ostium lesion there there is a long segment lesion of the om can you please ask them to show the floro i forget it with two branches so that is also the branch also subdivision also having a lesion we don't the epithelial in the images we can only see the doctor yeah so show the images please yeah. go to the next view next view we can't see the, we have not seen any of the views so then uh, we put the two wires and there is a led bifurcation lesion what is the next no no first uh, first you go kindly dr kosti you go to the images you very know very nice to know of the led d1 paper so, so here is the situation the where the patient LM is LM having partial lmc lesion and bifurcation of the led d1 right corner stand patent lcx long diffuse lesion so based upon that then uh, our intention is to do the initially uh, we did the uh, ivas of the left main mainly to rule out is there any significant uh, uh, left main ostial narrowing is there so i was showed the ostial left main area is 7.5 square mm so anybody can show the uh, brother can you show the ivas image brother just show the ivas image you can see the ivas the left main ivas uh, that one show that monitor are you able to see the ivas i am uh, i think one way i am able to uh, yeah listen any response from your side but uh, i am assuming that you are able to hear me very clearly uh, with that intention i am going ahead with the presentation we and, should show uh, the left main uh, there is a uh, lesion is there plaque is there but the area is not significant uh, then we accessed the oct study of the led as well as the diagonal i'll show the led study just one of you monitor the patient uh now show the i'll show one minute i will take now you can see the i'll go to zoom now see this is the oct study and uh, see there is a tight uh, eccentric calcification uh, at the led d1 bifurcation you can see the eccentric calcification like a calcium nodule this is after 2.5 nc dilatation you see the dissection and uh, i am able to see the very you see the dissection areas and uh, you can see very clearly eccentric calcium that is led d1 bifurcation but distally vessel is not that big vessel is only uh, 2.25 uh, on luminal diameter but external elastic luminal diameter that is about to 2.5 Actually, two points five downside to uh, point two five. Okay, then two point five. Can you hear me? Then you can see the uh, uh, air bubble artifact. You can see very clear. This is one of the artifact you can distinguish inside the OCT catheter. And uh, now I am moving. 
now see this is eccentric calcium and the proximal to the LED D1 bifurcation I am able to show you LED D1 bifurcation very clearly I will one by one now this is LED D1 bifurcation you can see the LED D1 here you are able to see two wires and this is the OCT catheter now I am going with two wires and you see one wire this is a proximal to the LED D1 bifurcation there is significant eccentric calcification and you can see very clearly just to add the site of uh, one into the LED one entering into the diagonal you can see very clearly two wires now this is the origin of the but that is very very critical and because diagonal also significant narrowing at the ostium so now you can see pragmally also calcium is there but we have chosen the landing zone here 7.3 that the diameter is about 3 so our intention is to take a 28 mm cover from here to here so here we wanted to take the entire LED is diseased then if you see here also block is there even uh, here also block is there but the area is good everywhere 5.7 5.2 nowhere is a 4.5 so here onwards area definitely 4 so that the reason I have chosen this is the area of the pragma landing zone 8.74 area is about uh, 3.3 mean diameter and if you go distally and uh, as you go distal it's like a tapered vessel uh, now we see very clearly that you are able to see uh, now uh, lumen diameter is uh, almost 2 only but external elastic uh, diameter we got it around 2.65 distally so based upon that we wanted to choose the uh, now here if you see here uh, 3.49 I'll show the external elastic uh, diameter now here to here almost 2.6 so based upon that we are choosing the 2.5 2.5 28 mm we wanted to go ahead now we recorded even the uh, one minute we'll go to the previous diagonal view I'll show the diagonal view also we took the diagonal injection also diagonal is showing a very critical lesion though it's a short segment the closure is very very uh, likely because if you see the diagonal distally it's a disease free but exactly at the site of origin uh, you can see here it's a uh, junction of the LED and D1 and distally vessel is fine but uh, you see very clearly very very critical area and uh, I will show now you see distally you can see here this is a normal uh, diameter trilaminar structure you are able to see there is no plug distally but the plug is start here also bezel is fine now if i take the uh, diameter 2.1 but uh, external elastic diameter is about 2.25 then you i am coming pragmally you can see the plug started this is a fibrous plug and you can see very very critical condition. This is after balloon dilatation. This is a very critical lesion involving the uh, that is LED origin. You can see the LED where diagonal is very very tight. This is a the uh, LED. Now if I am coming pragmally, you can see the LED ostium very clearly. And now we are entering into the diagonal uh, LED. You see that this is the eccentric calcification. See massive calcification and a very significant calcium one side like a D shape. You can see this has to be prepared very well but uh, uh, as per the criteria uh, less than 180 degree uh, length also le almost less than 5 mm because based upon that we thought we'll do uh, NC then pragmal if you come it's like a more of a, uh, macrophages infiltrations and you can see the fibrolipid plug and if you come the more of fibrous plug and here also fibro uh, fibrous with calcification and if you see here pragmally again uh, almost more than 180 degrees and uh, again pragmal if you come there is a fibrous a lipid block is there this is a lipid block with a lot of macrophages and you can see the LED origin and if I come pragmally you can see the LMC also nicely uh, okay let me zoom in and then I'll do it Dean 30 ah it yeah unable to hear eh? yeah yeah Hey, here is now. Audio, 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 audio. Ah, na, ah, hmm. 
So, me are matter it. I will interpret for you. Don't worry. Okay, okay. Uh, some technical problem. Yeah. yeah. So, the, so, the panel can address the questions. I will pass yeah. them on to Dr. Yeah. Kasturi. Uh, are you able yes, to see OCT you, images? Uh, yeah, we are seeing the OCT image yeah, very just, well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, just, uh, Doctor, I, I will interpret the OCT. Come, I will uh, talk about the OCT. Ajay, uh, if he can tell us a strategy, uh, what he plans to do. Uh, Dr. Uh, the yeah. faculty wants to know what is your strategy? What are you no, planning? Our strategy is the patient is having a uh, LM osteal disease and LAD D1 bifurcation lesion. LA diagonal osteum very, very critical. And even if I do provisional stenting, the closure is very, very highly because of the eccentric calcium at the LAD D1 bifurcation. So initially, uh, our intention is to do the uh, DK crust stenting of the uh, LAD D1 using 2.25 stent into the diagonal and 3 mm stent into the LAD. So DK crush and subsequently we'll optimize with OCT and OCT showed the calcium arc is less than 180 degree and uh, because the depth of the one side is more but length is relatively 5 mm that's the reason uh, even a diagonal also we dilated. So LCX also we assessed the LCX is looking borderline. LMCA was assessed with uh, IVAS, that is a borderline lesion. So, intentionally, we are going ahead with uh, LAD D1 DK crust stenting. I feel very sorry for poor audio visible. Uh, I think we are, uh, yeah. I will, uh, if uh, needed, I can talk on phone about the OCT images. Is it fine with you? Uh, Dr. Sridhar, we can hear you fine. Yeah. The only problem yeah. is our communication with you. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, that's the plan. We'll just quickly discuss among the faculty and get back to you. Sure. I sure. have just one thing. We saw only one shot of the angiogram. Yeah. The yeah. LAD diagonal part seems to have a small intramyocardial segment there. Yeah, just after the diagonal. Just after the LAD D1 hyperation, small intramyocardial segment. So any any points you So any any points from Dr. Singer to well, Dr. Bhuvan? I was thinking of asking him to do a physiological assessment of the left main. No, it's not recommended because the area is not that high. Why do you think so? I don't know. It's a significant LA division. LCX diffuse long lesion. The validity of the FFR is not. If at all, we can do the LAD D1 bifurcation. Subsequently, we can do the FFR. After that, if FFR is positive, if needed, still we can do the left main standing. That is our yeah, strategy. That's okay. So, Dr. Sridhar, we'll allow you to proceed with your case. Sure. And uh, we have some presentations here. We'll finish and then we'll come back to you. Any, yeah, any difference in strategy? Anybody from the faculty or the... Uh, Moderators, any anything in the panel? Okay, I think uh, the, 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 this uh, bifurcation can be. Very nice to listen to your voice. <laughs> Thank you, I sir. Yeah, like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Happy to be happy happy waiting for some points to come back from faculty, sir. Sure, yeah. sure, sure, sure. Doctor Ajay, see, once can you no. show all the angels? We have not. Yeah, we we no. have just seen one or two views. Yeah, I think we'll quickly yeah, see the request, angio and uh, yeah, get yeah, yeah. The request yeah. from the panel is to quickly show us the angiographic views. All Can you show the angiographic views? Yeah. 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 yeah, show that sure. angiography. Sravan, will you show the angiographic views? Yes. Dr. Dr. Ajay, I think once I'll we see the angio, the uh, we can go off live and we can discuss because it, it's uh -huh. more easier to discuss that way. Yeah. Uh, I think let me proceed with the strategy of uh, DK crush. Uh, so yeah. let's discuss and then you can proceed with the talk. Perfect. So we'll just yeah. see the angiogram. Yeah, right. Yeah. I'll show the angiogram views. Just morning one. We are not seeing them actually. The camera is only showing yeah, the Yeah, now back. you can see. Yeah, the, now it's yeah, good. Yeah. Good, good. Are you able to see? Yeah. yeah yes. Now yeah. I, uh, go to the next view. You can see the left main osteum. Even in this view also, there is some haziness and uh, with the catheter, some my and uh, LB uh, uh, pressure damp was there. So because of that, then we thought we'll assess with IVAS examination. Go to the next view. You can see the LED diagonal. Go to the next. See, this is LED diagonal. Both are very tight, but short segment lesions. 
very very critical both so ocity is clearly showing very critical vision even after uh, nc dilatation uh, diagonal is almost more than 90 percent vision and led almost 70 to 80 percent that after nc balloon dash very critical next go, go to the next you can see in this view very clearly uh, LED and diagonal are the uh, significant disease. I thought angiographically diagonal is not that significant. But uh, uh, when I saw the OCT, uh, very critical, totally according the lumen, uh, just to allow the OCT catheter. You see the LCX, there is a diffuse long lesion of the LCX also, that OM also lesion is there. So mild borderline lesion. Yeah. Uh, next. Yeah. Right coronary, you can see uh, previous trend patent is doing well. Ajay, can we proceed? Let him first start the case that we will discuss and come back after yeah, about right coronary, Dr. Shridhar, I will call you back the moment we sure, are ready sure. on the same phone. Right, thank you. Okay. So, what I do is I will just do a short uh, summary of this case and then we'll uh, individually ask starting lunch and I will uh, we'll get the opinion on how we start. We start yeah, to start. Approach na in the... So, Last I think. Na can you mute Dr. Sridhar Kasturi? Yeah. Can you mute his uh, microphone? Small test. Yeah. So uh, now uh, we, I think we understand that there is a, a left main osteal lesion, a angiogram, as well as there is a LED diagonal lesion. It appears that the LED is quite a big vessel uh, with a, it is a 0 1 1 bifurcation. Uh, with the uh, LAD and the diagonal ostium also, uh, it looks like from the OC, uh, it is about a significant lesion diagonal ostium. But by OCT, it looks like uh, the the ostium is significant, and also the diameter based on OCT says is 2.5 diagonal. So we have a 2.5 diagonal, nearly a three LAD. Uh, uh, so it's a 0, 1, 1 bifurcation. So how do we uh, plan? How do we proceed with the strategy? So if you start with Dr. Ranjan and then ask individually, all of them can sell the strategy and then we will go for the, uh, Dr. Ajay's talk. Can you, can you unmute, uh, Dr. Ranjan, can you unmute yourself, please? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Sangatwello. It's a very interesting case uh, in the sense uh, that uh, calcium there is probably deciding a lot because otherwise it's a smaller diagonal. And uh, if you see that proximal, there's one more diagonal, which seems to be a little more bigger than this diagonal, and that has osteal uh, stenosis. So among the diagonal, probably that will be a preferred diagonal. So if I have to do and... Uh, you know, most likely I would go for a provisional stenting because the diagonal I feel is a little smaller and LED definitely is uh, very big, but uh, it's at uh, that D2 junction. So most likely I would have gone for a single strand and, uh, you know, a provisional uh, strategy. But if you okay. have to do, a, uh, you know, if you think it's significant and chance of loss of a diagonal is high, then decay crush breaks the, in the perfect sense, uh, you know, because uh, such smaller artery, I am very sure that uh, the restenosis will be a big factor later. Cosmetically, initially, you'll get a good result, but later the restenosis could go up to 20%. GK crush among the strategy will have the least restenosis, so I feel it makes the best. Uh, I think it's a yeah. great solution. Let's yeah. now move to Dr. Barua quickly. Can you just tell you what you will do? Hi. I agree uh, what uh, Dr. Nandan said he told. I think I agree with him because it is not very big diagonal. It's hardly 2.2 millimeter diagonal with a uh, discrete osteal lesion, mostly osteal lesion. It is even less than uh, 5 millimeter uh, from the osteum. And uh, of course, the uh, uh, angle is a little bit less, uh, less than 50%. Going by angle, probably two stand strategy is okay. But considering the short uh, no, osteal lesions with a small diagonal i think i also prefer to go for provision fantastic and uh, dr kali you uh, yourself diagonal looks to be small you know it's not a big diagonal and if it is less than 2.5 the textbook teaching is that we shouldn't bother about that so i completely agree with dr ranjan and also dr Bhopal that we shouldn't bother much about the side branch, which is a smaller one, 2.2 or 2.25 as it appears. And we should go for the stenting of the main branch, keeping a bear in the side branch, and then have a good angiographic view and see what has happened. And uh, do a pot, and after that, we'll look at the side branch, how it is looking. And if there is stimulus flow, I think we should be satisfied about that without bothering. Because it's not... 
a big amount of uh, cardio yeah, fantastic thank you dr kali it is not a, yeah it's not a big doctor and going for yeah yeah i uh, if i may say a word uh, dr singh uh, please same, same uh, i feel exactly the same so i won't repeat it in fact i wanted to request dr chadda for his comments on this uh, no, i want to ask chadda specifically on the length, on the length oh, of the vessel the ct um, angio films that is one aspect what i want to ask is you know he said uh, it was decided to do an ffr to the left main ostium after addressing the led um ajay uh, what about uh, doing an ffr with the wire in the circ in this case okay uh, to address the left main uh, um, the, the significance of the left okay. main okay okay the question of left main we will discuss about it just immediately after dr chara's call hey, dr chara are you there on the line hello dr chara okay i want to bring an important point about the definition criteria so based on the definition criteria whether this needs a single sin strategy or a double sin strategy i think this with with, uh, with uh, all of your inputs and from what we have seen so far it looks like it doesn't it comes uh, the definition criteria should have one major and two minor to call it as a complex bifurcation but here it's a, it doesn't appear to have a, a criteria for complex bifurcation so even if you use a definition criteria we should try to use a single strategy but i thought i wanted to have this word from dr shara i think he's not there online so that is one and second uh, uh, as you all said uh, i think uh, the single uh, the, uh, the diagonal appears to be small and always we have the option of putting a second stent in case uh, we need to so provisional i think uh, all the panel everyone agrees and based on the definition criteria i think we should think of a, a single stent strategy but again uh, it also uh, left to the operator's choice so operator is uh, comfortable with the uh, two stent technique and uh, straight away goes for a dk crush fine let us see what he does but before that uh, let's talk about the left main ostium so we have already done uh, iwis and the iwis shows uh, uh, the mla of 7 uh, uh, more than 7 square millimeters 7.2 or 7.3 square millimeters so uh, uh, at this point when you have the in a, in a left main situation the data with imaging is equal to the data with physiology whereas in a non left main situation you have definitely the physiology precedes the physiology is more important than the uh, the imaging but in a left main we have so much of data now correlating imaging and physiology just based on imaging alone we can conclusively confirm whether the, this patient needs uh, pca or not generally you have a cutoff point if you have a cutoff of more than 6 square millimeters this can be safely left without P, uh, without pca and medical management but if you have for for asian people there are different cutoffs and we have seen they have now have a data 4.5 square millimeters if it is less than 4.5 square millimeters these are very significant and need, these needs to be treated whereas if you have a gray zone between 4.5 and 6 then we need supplemental ffr to be sure that whether that needs revascularization or not so i want to come a short comment from dr ajay on this and then we'll proceed further okay so great point so there are we'll take the question in three parts one part is the correlation of the imaging along with the physiology the gold standard for any stenotic lesion is always physiology however the left main physiology interpretation is complicated by the two large branches which come out and the presence of disease downstream in both these vessels influences the ffr measurement that we get in either in fact that is the reason why imaging has become so prominent and that is why we have had to resort to looking at long term outcomes following following up of imaging otherwise for every other situation in the coronary tree physiology actually trumps imaging as far as uh, you know long term outcomes are concerned other things being equal you know if one has a large lipid core thin cap fibroatheroma even a slightly uh, you know there is a little problem in interpreting or predicting or how benign this particular lesion is going to be that is number one secondly speaking purely as a scientist the presence of a stenosis downstream which is more than 70% in the led will influence the ffr when one measures the left main ffr down to the circumflex as well this has been shown by elegant studies wherein balloons of various sizes were gradually inflated at increasing sizes and ffr across the circumflex was measured and it's been shown that when the stenosis exceeds 70% downstream the validity of the ffr across the circumflex for the left main becomes a little less reliable 
that is why we have to resort to imaging and that is the basic limitation of uh, you know physiology as far as the left main is concerned and uh, the third point is about comparing the two the problem with both is they give us different kinds of information the quality and the type of the plaque in the left main or in any part of the coronary tree is going to influence the natural history of that over and above what the physiology tells us i feel they are complementary and in a young 53 year old patient with gross dyslipidemia with a thin cap fibroatheroma whatever be the area and the imaging if in case the patient comes to us with significant angina i would be very very scared to let him go all alone just looking at one area in a patient with a fibrotic lesion who's got chronic stable angina and downstream disease that explains the angina i think we are slightly better off it is not such a simple decision to make that's my input i think we need to individualize the decision along with all the information that we can get from every single modality in a given patient now dr ajay i just want to ask you one specific question uh this patient has an mla of more than 7 square millimeters we can leave it alone so yeah don't leave it alone don't need any other investigation but just yes. want to add one comment uh dr sridhar kasturi has used ivs to assess the mla of the left main and now using oct to the led diagonal bifurcation see i would like to you know emphasize that uh, ivs is a very useful tool particularly when we image the osteal left main but of course now there are uh, people sometimes we are using uh, oct to assess the uh, or the, the osteum of the left main uh, with we are having some ways to image the osteum so i i have always uh, find it difficult to use two amazing modality in a case and uh, to add to the cost so either uh, we start ivs and complete the ivs or we start with oct and complete the ivs unless you have uh, the catheters uh, free of cost with the limitation so i think that i think uh, let's uh, go ahead with the dr ajay's uh, presentation i think it's a lot of relevance because now we discussed uh, various strategies uh, provisional versus tk uh, crush Uh, one should remember that uh, provisional is not a single cell strategy uh, provisional is just a way of approach and one can move to a two cell strategy uh, like you can go to culart or you can go to tap uh, after pro- provisional so the options are culart tap absolutely so let us uh, hear from dr swami and then we will uh, discuss further so sir i will crave your indulgence are my slides visible not yet Are they seen now? Not yet. You can see now. Please go ahead. Okay. So thank you very much for your attention. We see these different kinds of anatomies, all five different cases. All of them are Medina one one one. Can we decide the best strategy for all? And that is going to be the focus of our talk. What are the strategies uh-huh. for bifurcations in uh, our normal daily life? Now, approach to a non-left main bifurcation is simple. I'm not going to repeat what has been said. Is the side branch significant? Is it more than two? Length more than seventy? Does the patient have LV dysfunction? This is an important determinant. Sometimes a smaller side branch may be very important in a patient who's got a light small vessel. Is there significant disease osteally? Is there disease greater than ten millimeters in length? Tortuosity, calcification will divide our bifurcation into simple and complex. And as has been said, these are the criteria. Any one of these. multiple bifurcations thrombus containing a reference vessel diameter of the main vessel less than 2.5 lesion length greater than 25 calcification a bifurcation angle more than 70 or less than 45 any of these two will make this a complex lesion and none of these will make this a simple lesion this has been spoken of repeatedly and it bears repetition but it's an extremely good so we just look so, at the various sorry for interrupting you uh, doctor uh, so this is a very very important point what you've just mentioned Uh, this definition, this criteria, bifurcations. So it comes to simple bifurcation. Do you agree? Absolutely. So let's let's go ahead. So let's go ahead. So the can you make screen, yes, Dr. Shami? Is the screen size? Can you make it full it screen? It is complete, actually. Yeah. Okay. Very small. Yeah. Dr. Karan, sir, you can you can view the uh, presentation in the full screen mode, and if you tap on the bottom right side corner, sir. Okay. 
So if we'll go on, there is essentially provisional and inverted provisional. These are approaches, as uh, Dr. Singhatuvel has mentioned. Mentioned essentially, the principle is to put one stent across from the main vessel into the distal main vessel, jail the branch on the side branch, do a proximal optimization with a balloon that is chosen to the proximal main branch size. A distal strut rewiring for the side branch, a kissing balloon inflation to ensure that the opposite part of the flow divider is scaffolded by some strut of the main vessel stem, and then a repeat pot to correct whatever deformation has taken place. This can also be done inverted for the side branch instead of using the main branch, and this is called provisional and inverted provisional. I'll just show you a little clinical situation. The 49-year-old male with weak concept and down. Can you, other can you unmute others, please? There's some disturbance, please. So this is a 49-year-old male with recent onset angina with severe exertional discomfort, underwent an angiogram outside in Kerala, was advised the bypass had come to us. And this is what the diagnostic angiogram is. He's got an extremely critical lesion in the middle AD and a long lesion in the shaft of the left main from the ostium to the middle of the shaft. One can see that this can easily be covered by a single stent, and that's what was done. Now, the provisional stenting strategy is where a single stent is used. This is recommended as the default strategy and used as the modality of treatment in the majority of bifurcations. Essentially, this involves, as we've already spoken of, putting one wire and a stent into the main branch. This doesn't show the jail side wire very significantly. I wonder if my arrow, this is the side branch, which has been jailed. A proximal optimization balloon, a pot balloon is inflated up to the diameter of the proximal main vessel. And then this wire is pulled out and recrossed. Either that can be done or an additional wire can be placed and the wires are crossed after coming back proximally. A kiss is done and then a report is done. And the same thing. Now, there are small tips for the initial wiring. The more difficult branch is wired first to prevent rotation and wire wrap. Why do we need to wire the side branch to open the bifurcation angle, facilitate access to the side branch, reduce the risk of side branch occlusion, and keep it as a marker in case of occlusion? An acute angle, as has been said, is a predictive factor, especially if a large diameter stent needs to be used. We could use either a hydrophilic or a non-hydrophilic wire. It's important to jail the pro proximal to the radio-opaque tip. Actually, electron microscopic examination of these hydrophilic wires showed less damage as compared to the non-hydrophilic wires. Routine side branch pre-dilatation Routine predilatation is not recommended. Exceptions are in very, very severe osteal stenosis of the side branch or in a very calcified side branch. There's a problem with the risk of dissection with the potential increase in the requirement of side branch stenting if one does actually predilate. And dissection may also make it extremely difficult to enter the true lumen into the side branch after having placed the stent in the main, uh, main branch. There is also an increased risk of side branch restenosis if the dilated side branch osteum is not properly scaffolded by the main vessel stent in DK crush 5. So pre-dilatation as a routine is not recommended except in the exceptions shown. Choice of stent is entirely up to you. However, knowledge of post-dilatation limits and a stent size to the distal main branch is an important um, concept to appreciate. Pot is required to correct the malaposition of the proximal main branch and the pot length adequate to permit a pot must be used in the proximal main branch. In the left main, sometimes one doesn't have a long enough length and one can easily put the guide inside to prevent the balloon from contacting the proximal part of the left main or use a guide liner for the same. If the stent size is larger than the dis distal main branch, you get carinal shift and there's a risk of distal dissection and it changes the angle from a perpendicular or a more closer to 90 degrees to a parallel angle and that makes it all the more difficult as far as the initial procedure is concerned and also negatively impacts the long-term outcome. Do we wire the side branch? Side branch balloon dilatation leads to distortion of the main branch or treat that means should we balloon the side branch. Isolated side branch dilatation initially was not advised, but some imaging um, data has come, which has shown endothelial bridges with a connector across the ostium of the side branch. Requirement for reintervention has been shown and a report is always mandatory. Thus, a systematic kissing balloon was advised. But there's furious debate about how what the kissing balloon actually does to the main branch. And there is a group of people who believe that a kissing balloon actually changes the anatomy of the proximal main branch and an alternative of pot side branch pot has been proposed. However, little more data is required for us to answer this question very, very clearly. When do we intervene in the side branch? If it is unsuitable for stenting, it has no normal, no angina or ECG signs. It is perfectly reasonable to leave it alone. We definitely dilate the side branch if inadequate results are achieved. Anti-grade flow is impaired. The flow grade is less than three. The severe osteal side branch narrowing, 
because in sometimes in the future we might require to intervene there or if the ffr is less than 0.8 an excellent point was made by admiral kalra a little while earlier the timing of the side branch assessment is actually best after having placed the main branch stent if one does need to do the side branch assessment with ffr which balloon in the side branch unstented side branch always a short nc is to be used inflation first in the side branch with simultaneous deflation unstented avoid very high pressure inflation because one is likely to end up in dissection at the distal edge and then predispose to using a second stent in some bench tests especially from foy natal asymmetric side branch balloon inflation reduced malapposition that is we use up to 10 atmospheres and in the side branch in 16 and then thereafter do the pot in the main branch why do we when do we need a second stent if after the kissing balloon or the side branch opening there is significant side branch flow impairment is a major dissection and the side branch is diseased and large enough to lead to significant residual ischemia remember all these are in patients who do not have lv dysfunction sometimes in patients with severe lv dysfunction in sole surviving vessels all the side branches become very very important what about the what technique for the second stent now there are multiple techniques as has been uh, spoken of if you have a 90 degree angle side branch ostium is covered and you have clearly got distal strut axis t or tap are favored if the angle is uh, you know closer to 90 and the side branch ostium is not perfectly covered but for this one must cross through the distal strut culot or mini culot depends on the side branch being almost the same size as the main branch and suppose one ends up with a non distal crush then the option of crush or some kind of a variation of the crush becomes a, a part of the strategy high pressure sequential and simultaneous balloon inflation and low pressure to relocate the carina and a final report is always mandatory whatever technique one uses this is the bifurcation lesion how we look at it we do a provisional stenting with a pot the side branch has residual stenosis dissection decreased flow and ischemia t if entered through a distal strut tap or culot if entered this should actually be culot or crush if it enters through a proximal strut if the side branch is less than 75% no dissection normal flow no ischemia it can be left alone also or do a pot side branch pot or a kissing balloon depending on your preference little bit more data and evidence is required in this for us before we make firm recommendations and the very fact that we have got multiple strategies means no one is absolutely superior to the other complex 111 when one has difficult side branch access and high risk of occlusion it's always better to choose two stent culot t and dk crash and we're going to look at them shortly back to our case he wanted pci this is what we chose for him initial ballooning with an nc and an angioscalp and then a single stent was taken from the left main up to the first septal which is where we felt the disease the normal segment was it was post dilated pot was done we do a separate pot for the shaft and the ostium using different sizes and different inflation pressures thereafter it was crossed through the distal strut one strut opened a single kiss done and then a report and a pot again and that was our final shot that is what we did for provisional now what about suppose one needs to do a second stent a two stent strategy a tap can always be at to tap from the beginning as well this is the case of an 82 year old with chronic stable angina for two years he came to us at crescendo for two months with uh, unable to walk to the bathroom a previous angiogram a year back advised cabg refused brought to emergency with ongoing chest pain advised to undergo an angiogram and this is what his angiogram was this is a heavily calcified uh, left circulation with almost complete occlusion subtotal occlusion and with hemodynamic instability so an iabp was placed the pressure was damping so the guide was dehooked in summary this is somebody with a heavily calcified subtotal occlusion with timi2 flow non dominant circumflex the plan was to do a plaque modification in tss because you're between a rock and a hard place so this is the wiring with an xtr which is our favored wire in this situation changed for a rotablation wire and then rotablation it's done in segments we just divide the calcified segment into various parts and do them all individually and then at the end do a polishing run after having ensured that we have covered entire calcified segment we check after rotablation for a or for flow for perforation and for dissection once it's not there then we prepare the bed further wire the ramus now we can't wire it as long as the rota bar is still in there wire the ramus dilate the left main and the led with angioscalp at high pressures use the cutting balloon for the most most heavily calcified part use a long nc balloon just to make sure that we'll be able to deliver a long stent 
The dissection that we see is actually quite good because it means that our stent is going to expand. This is the LM LED stent right across to where we want. We do first the pot, inflate the shaft and the ostium separately, as I said, then rewire the OM through the strut, open one strut, do the kiss. And then after this is what happens after the kiss, it looks perfectly all right. But then we go back in, position the pot balloon very carefully so that it doesn't go across the carina, try and keep it and repot the entire left main segment of the stent, the ostium and the shaft and finish with the pineal pot and that's our final angiogram this is before and after now t or tap as i said provisional up to provisional it's the same once we scaffold the part of the side branch opposite the main vessel opposite the uh, flow divider we then bring in the side branch stent and this allows us if one has done a proper distal cross to properly scaffold the ostium of the side branch producing a minimal metal neocarina. As one looks at the bottom screen here, the second screen, you can still see that there is some neocarina, but it is minimized. The more distal one is able to cross, the lesser the neocarina and the better our long-term results. So this is an 86 years young man undergoing chest discomfort for four hours uh, with borderline pressures, global ST depression and ST elevation in AVR with, an, with severe LV dysfunction. And this is what his angiogram showed us. He also has a heavily calcified distal left main with almost subtotal occlusion and there's a large filling defect in the distal left main which appears to be extending into the circumflex and partially into the LED as well. Immediately uh, IABP and a long sheath. The choice in this situation is there's no doubt that he has got complex uh, disease and this is a dominant circumflex. We will have to do a two-stent strategy because we need a perfect result in both these vessels. So either a planned DK crush versus a T and protrusion unstable patient hemodynamic compromise so a planned tap was done this is what was done because of the thrombus we didn't contemplate a rotablation otherwise we would have done that because we had absolutely no support and the only lv assist device we had with us was the iabp that's what we used we have cut the ostium of the led and the circumflex this is the angiogram thereafter placed the stent across from the left main into the circumflex done a pot checked after the pot on this side recrossed into the circumflex, again opened the strut, done the a kiss, and then positioned for the tap with the circumflex, tried and cross as distally as possible. You can see that this, it appears to be as distal as possible. Obviously, such an unstable patient imaging was not possible. Thereafter, this is the first kiss, the second kiss, the report, and that's the final angiogram. And uh, it was for the speed and uh, for the simplicity of the procedure that the tap was chosen for this particular patient and uh, we managed to get it. Now, what about the culotte? The culotte is a little more complex and it involves multiple pots and multiple crosses. Essentially, we use two stents wherein we go from the proximal main branch into the branch which is more difficult, usually into the side branch to enter. A pot is done, then a distal main vessel, distal cross is done into the main branch. The strut is opened. Then the main vessel is stented, followed by a repeat pot. Again, a distal rewiring is done through the second stent into the first stent, the distal part. A final pot is done. And then a, a kiss is done and then a final pot is done. This is the kiss and this is the final pot. And this is what it looks like. So this is an example in which this is a patient who has got a normal left main, but a proximal left LED, which is diffusely diseased, about 90% followed by a complete occlusion here. You can see some distal LED coming off, but there is a very large diagonal coming out from this particular LED. And it is not possible to actually manage this because this diagonal was flowing before the CTO. So it's an extremely important vessel. And if you lose it, it's a major problem as far as the patient is concerned. So that is what the strategy that was adopted was a Q lot for this patient as an elective strategy. Both were wired, both are dilated. First, the distal part of the LED was addressed. Then the first stent, which goes from the proximal LED into the diagonal, the size of these two vessels is almost the same. So this is a 3.5. Then this is crossed with a single balloon. Then the second stent, the final kiss. For want of time, I haven't shown all the images. This is the final angiogram, and this is the follow-up of the patient after 11 months. You can see that the distal vessel has grown as well. Now, DK crush is a strategy which has become extremely popular and for multiple reasons. It has 
it is a little complex because it has 17 different steps 11 major and 6 minor it is hardware intensive it demands meticulous intention to detail and it has very powerful opponents because the europeans don't like it much however it's been extensively studied it can be applied in almost all situations short term outcomes are excellent and long term outcomes compared with other strategies seem to be superior it's been compared with culotte with tap and with the other crush strategies especially for complex bifurcation of the left main the dk crush currently appears to be the standard of care especially in in the hands of asian op op uh, operators we choose lesions where we need side branch of sufficient important to be patent in the long term which usually is almost always a left main bifurcation every step is a preparation for the next step any shortcut likely to cause problems we anticipate and prepare for problems along the way prevention is always the key bailout hardware and solutions must be there we look at the landing zones. This is important because the proximal main vessel landing zone and the side branch distal landing zone, this is a point which must be emphasized because the side branch distal must be in a normal segment always. It is difficult to intervene immediately in the distal side branch landing zone if one ends up with a problem there. And the distal main branch distal landing zone, can it be reached to the single stent is another question which must be answered in every patient. These are all the steps essentially. In, in short, the side branch is stented after preparation. The side branch is then crushed by a balloon in the main branch. It is recrossed through a non-distal strut. This is important because if one goes through distal, one might leave the carina uncovered on the side branch side. A first kiss is done. Thereafter, the main vessel is stented, followed by a pot. Then it is recrossed again through the second and a second kiss is performed and a final pot is performed. This is what it looked like oh, on, uh, on the bench testing. And uh, this is just some examples. This is a young 34-year-old male who was evacuated with ongoing chest pain with dynamic ST elevation and AVR, deep T inversion with uh, significant regional wall motion in both the LED and the circumflex territory. He was air evacuated to us and this is what his anatomy was like. He had a norm dominant and normal uh, right, uh, right coronary artery. He's got a short left main, but a Medina 111 with very nice and good landing zones. Since he was hemodynamically a little unstable, we used what we usually have with us, that is the uh, IABP. And after preparing both, this is how we place the side branch stent into the circumflex, which shows the circumflex as a side branch, although it's a little larger, that was crushed. This is the half kiss that we do often. This is called the half kiss, and we pull the side branch stent back, dilate at high pressure, and then pull the main branch stent back and do a small half kiss here. Pull this out and then crush with the main branch stent at high pressure. Thereafter, do a pot, recross, do a kiss, and that is after the second stent has been placed. That's our final result. And this is shared with us with one of my colleagues. This is a 11 month follow up of this patient done at a different center. It's been shared on the phone, so I'm just showing it. So please pardon me for the quality of the images, but I think it can be seen that the result is very good and he's doing extremely well. This is another patient who's, um, uh, I don't remember his age, but he's almost got a complete occlusion of the left main, which is heavily calcified worsening angina again with an IABP in place this is the first wire being placed then the circumflex which was a little more difficult to wire which was done with our XTR wire thereafter dilated both are pre-dilated prepared well with cutting balloons and then we removed our coated wire and put in a workhorse wire because obviously that was our better uh, it's always to be done this is the first tent being placed into the circumflex remembering the landing zone the point that we made earlier we brought about three millimeters into the left main to clearly cover the ostium. The half kiss that we did, pull the circumflex balloon back and go ahead with a high pressure, makes it re easy to recross after the crush and opposes the circumflex tent to the carina well. This is the first kiss after we recross. This is the second stent that we are placing into the from the left main across into the uh, proximal LED. The LCX wire is used as a sepal wire to mark the left main ostium. And we used the landing zone of the distal LED stent is the stent inflation, then the pot, the recross, open the strut, the kiss, and the report, and that's our final result. This is what we started with, and this is what we finished with. In summary, a left main bifurcation, this is quickly what we do basically. If the side branch lesion is less than 70%, it is simple. If the side branch access is easy, we just go ahead with a provisional or an inverted provisional with a single stent. If we end up with a compromise, we switch to a two stents technique. If the side branch access is difficult, you can straight away decide that you want to do a two stent strategy, either a inverted culotte or others. 
but the side branch is more and it's a complex lesion the markers that we had spoken of earlier we straight away go with the two stent strategy ivs and oct imaging is strongly recommended especially with left main stenting and ideally today all left main bifurcations must be done with imaging guidance in summary one stent wherever possible complex bifurcations planned with two stent strategy are always better that's what dk crash 5 showed us choose the strategy best suited to the patient anatomy the available resources including skill and imaging thank you for your attention thank you dr ajay it was a fantastic talk very illustrative case examples step by step fantastic uh, and now let's uh, i think uh, the important point is uh, for any beginner assess the anatomy very carefully and at least know the three simple techniques the provisional the t tap the culotte and if needed by uh, dk crush i thought dk crush as dr ajay said needs more experience and you can start with these two techniques as uh, tap and culotte if you want boost and techniques and then majority i think provisional is going to be the uh, easiest and uh, which will be the best for the patient so let us start uh, a quick discussion so let's we'll start with dr ranjan and uh, dr ranjan uh, about uh, uh, dk crush uh when do you think uh, uh, operator should start doing dk crush and uh, as dr ajay pointed out uh, the crossing should be uh, more not should not be distal crossing in the distal crossing is very important when you do a provisional particularly for a uh, for a tap or a culotte but for a dk crush we don't advise uh, distal crossing so mm -hmm. you tell us more about the dk crush and uh, how you do about how you do the uh, dk crush yeah yeah thank you dr hello dr ajay <clears throat> excellent talk i think you have summarized everything what everybody needs to know i think the importance of dk crush comes in its data and you know the fact that uh, it uh, its data is almost as good as uh, a single stent strategy and it gives you two stents with a extremely good uh, result now to answer uh, you know uh, we are all little worried about dk crush because of number of steps and number of you know it looks very complex but uh, honestly uh, actually it's not that tough when you start doing it you realize recrossing and crossing because you are always worried every time you crush you remove the side branch you know and that happens at least two or three times so you are removing everything from side branch you are always worried as a beginner whether you will ever go back to that branch or you have lost the access uh, it's definitely hardware intensive there are many times you have to take newer balloons and newer wires there is no doubt but crossing itself for dk crush because if you since you have done the steps properly it's not that tough so that's something the message i want to give here is don't be scared just because it has too many steps uh, crossing and recrossing are not that tough as you think because uh, you know the, uh, the steps are actually well thought of there is a reason why each of those steps are done at particular uh, you know point and that makes recrossing very easy so because of uh, you know i remember uh, dr colombo speaking once in one of the meeting where he says the only technique which you can use for bifurcation is dk crush that that was his statement and if he has to do bifurcation you know how he operates uh, excellent operator so he would do multiple dk crushes one starting from d2 lad lad d1 you know multiple so i feel as intervention is most of us need to learn dk crush little early on as dr sangeet will tell it's little intensive but you know we have to learn it if you have to learn maybe uh, you have to learn it probably as a second bifurcation uh, technique if not as a uh, uh, first one you uh, you may have to learn it uh, start learning it early because it takes longer to learn <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to interrupt you, sir. Uh, we have a few questions from the audience, and it has been shared in the private chat. And as well as Dr. Kasuri is ready, and his audio has also been fixed. He can hear you, sir. Doctor hmm. uh, Sangatwal, you are muted. We are not. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, this is one of the questions from the from the audience. So, uh, question is. is side branch bailout stenting associated with poor outcomes than two stent elective technique so i think let's uh, dr kahali do you want to take that dr kahali okay fine so i think he is uh, yes. muted 
Yeah. This was already in, uh, you know bailout stenting of the side branch. The prognosis and the mess and the event rate is more. There is no doubt about it, and it happens. But anyhow, if the if we think if we go for a single stent strategy, we have to accept it that we have to go for provisional uh, stenting. And as we discussed, the core is you know it's the main strategy now according to EBC and also American bifurcation mm -hmm. society recommendations and other society recommendation. So we have to accept it, but it is true also that there, it is no denying a fact that in bailout strategy, the mess rate is higher than the okay, so you know, elective stenting <laughs> of the side plant. It is true. So let's see the provisional stenting. When we go beyond yeah. provision, suppose the side branch occludes after provision, you go ahead and put a stent in the side branch with a tap. Okay? So if you do that, versus a patient who has planned a two stent technique, like a DK crush, you stent the side branch, then the main branch. The outcomes are fine with both these. Whether you do the side branch first or side branch last, it really doesn't matter. So what Dr. Kali is trying to tell is a bailout in a case where you have an emergency occlusion and you try to salvage the side branch, then maybe the chances are uh, going to be uh, more maze with the bail, uh, with the bailout uh, in, in a side branch stenting. But if we electively plan, either you stent the side branch first or later, it, it is not going to alter the outcome. So let us, I think, let's move on now. I think, uh, should we go ahead with Barua stock and then go on finally? Uh, there was one point, you, in fact, you asked that question, why distal crossing in DK crush? As yes. Dr. Uh, Swami, he mentioned one reason. Another reason Can is... We, uh, discuss that. Uh, we, let's see how uh, Dr. Uh, Sridhar Kasturi has discussed. We have, we have very short of time. So when uh, Sridhar Kasturi is going to show us how he has crossed and we'll discuss that. Uh, yeah. Barua, do you want to finish your talk now or should we go to Sridhar Kasturi? Okay, he's already there. Because my point is, uh, you know, we have only about 45 minutes left. So finally, we can end up with the live case and the take-home uh, message. So if Barua can uh, finish his talk... Uh, mm -hmm. Then we can go ahead and uh, finish the live case if you all if you all agree. What the organizers uh, is the technical team? Is that okay? Yeah, yeah fine. Okay. Where, where, where yes, is sir. he with the live yes, case? Sir. Has he communicated? Where is he with the live case? Sunshine. Yeah, yeah. Can you find out that, please? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, sure. Technical sir. technical team is where is he with the live case? If he's done, we can finish it off and then take Dr. Barua's talk. After that, if he has still work to do, we'll take the talk first. There's a lot of communication issues, so I thought if we finish off our talk, yeah, yeah, I think that's fine. Let's go okay. Yeah. okay, fine. Yeah, go ahead, Dr. Baru, please. Yeah. Is it visible? Not yet. Lights are visible. Not yet, not yet. Murphy's law. Dr. Kasul is uh, ready, sir. Okay. Okay, fine. Then let, let him, if we can hear him, it'll be good. Hope there's a communication. Do we have audio from Dr. Kasturi? Dr. Kasturi, can you hear us, sir? Dr. Shridhar, sir, can you hear us? Is he completed the case or uh, is in the middle of the case? The number you have dialed is currently busy. If he is completed the case, Kasturi, can you hear us? The other way, we can check. Okay, is it audible, sir? Can somebody respond? Yeah, yeah we have been Shavan? trying to respond for the last 10 minutes. Can you hear us? Shravan, uh, Shravan, we can hear you. Please go ahead. Just go back. Go back. They are able to hear us just fine. Yes, sir. I think the second strength is coming in. Then this is a diagonal set. We have put 2.2.2 
Dr. Shridhar, can you hear us? Dr. Shridhar, can you hear us? Yes, sir. I, I can intermittently hear you. So I, I, I we were look trying to see the kiss. Actually, we didn't see the kiss, the final kiss. First kiss, go to the first. Final kiss. I am doing now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Fine. So we have crossed now, and we are just doing the final kiss. Final okay. Uh, there we were facing difficulty, then we pulled both wipes and we crashed. Then uh, subsequently, now we are putting one more. So we have opened the strut of the side branch with a smaller balloon first before this 2.5, isn't it, sir? 1.5. Then we. Okay. So. Okay. Okay, when I do the final kissing, as was pointed out in the talk, I go high pressure individually, sequentially, and then do the uh, simultaneous kissing balloon. So I think that's important. I hope. Uh, yeah, we So as I say, sequential, simultaneous, and then. See, another important point about kissing is, it has been shown that the duration of kiss is important for good expansion of the stents and get a better MSA. So it has been shown to have at least minimum of 20 seconds kiss. 
So particularly in environment where patients can tolerate, uh, I think we should just make sure you have stay in the kissing balloon for at least 20 seconds. The left main maybe can be shorter. Dr. Sangatvelu, does deflation matter whether main should be deflated or side? What, what is it? It all depends on the technique what we use. For example, if we use a tap technique, it's critically important to simultaneously deflate both together because you're going to create a metallic neocarina. And mm -hmm. if you deflate one balloon earlier, then you can deflect the carina towards the other side of the branch, either to the side branch or towards the main branch. So in a tap, it's very important to simultaneously deflate. Whereas in a DK crush, it is not so important to simultaneously deflate. You can you do it either way. It doesn't matter. You have a good kiss, but sequential high pressure inflation followed by a kiss for 20 seconds is very important when you particularly in a DK crush uh, where you have a lot of metal. Mm. And geographically looks a very pleasing result. Yes. Is the left is the LED wire out? And I'm the, uh... Yeah. Come, 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 fast. Give me one, uh, three balloon, uh, three ten mm. Thing, uh, definitely that is elliptical index and uh, at the same time asymmetrical expansion, you know, just proximal to the carina. So we have that to always perform part and see that it's circular and even proximal portion also opposed well or not. So part is very, very important. Actually, part changed the scenario. And kissing, many people, they say like a uh, uh, the first side branch, two atmosphere, next main branch, main vessel, go at two atmosphere, and up size up to 12 to 14 atmosphere, then simultaneously both. and the simultaneous deflation and maintain two to 20 to 30 seconds atmospheres inflations uh, not only the regular even any strength also uh, better mm -hmm. to give a 20 to 30 second uh, better to at least two inflations so that the strength gets opposed very well expansion and opposition will be uh, particularly after these iva studies uh, bigger the better better to go with high pressure and keep it there for a 20 to 30 seconds if patient is tolerating well. Yeah, I think. Yeah, lady. Yeah, you can, one minute. Pragmal portion, no? Yeah, go ahead. Do it. Do it. Okay, see, one of the important points is okay. it's critically okay. important to choose okay. the balloon which starts the carina. So yeah. I, I, we are not clearly seeing here where the balloon is seen, but uh, if you if the balloon should be, it should not extend into the main branch or into the side branch. Yeah, it should be it just not No, we have landed just before carina. Uh, Fantastic. Can you hear us, Dr. Kasturi? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before carina Fantastic. only we have landed. Okay. Great, great. So <laughs> I think that is a important is uh, showing. I think uh, to show that's... a big balloon which is uh, exactly at the carina. So uh, another important thing is nowadays, uh, the balloon marker, uh, you should also know some certain balloons have 0.5 millimeter protrusion beyond the marker, some have 1 millimeter. So you need to know that uh, for the various balloons because when you place the marker in the carina, you should know how much the balloon is protruding. So it's important to know that. Actually, the e current EBC uh, update uh, gives importance to the balloon marker and the, the protrusion of the balloon beyond the marker. Another yeah, important carina, uh, thing. So if we enter, there is no problem. No need to reach up to the carina. Just to two or three mm before also, that's fine. Ultimately, it should be before the confluence. 
Yeah, and okay. sometimes uh, you know, sometimes the proximal lesion is very short. One is tempted to keep a very short length of stent. Hmm. Uh, right in That's the beginning, one of the big problem. for this repot, the final pot, yeah. and keep enough length, more than the smallest balloon length that you have in your lab. Yeah. You have suppose you have an eight millimeter balloon, keep at least eight or ten millimeters of stent in the main branch proximally for this yeah, final that, repot. Yeah, that is very important, right? At least. Uh, uh, we don't have a six mm balloons. And have a six mm more often, at least eight will be there. At least eight mm extension should be there. But uh, that, if a eight mm balloon is available in your cat lab, at least ten mm. Most of the time, many people they don't keep eight mm, particularly when you do the left main, uh, like a four point five or a five mm is there. See that adequate part. Uh, if you don't do the part, then definitely it will be a problem. Yeah. Okay. Ideally, even the kissing, it is recommended that we use short NC balloons now. By yeah, 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 NC is short. Less than 10 millimeters. So, this is an LED. Because the polygon of confluence will always have a larger diameter than either of the two branches. I think we'll remove an LED diagonal. Yeah, remove this. Remove that. Remove that. Oh. Uh, we'll take one part. After part, we have not taken one injection. I think after part, you final view you can take. Take one. Shot. Yeah, this is a post uh, uh, part. Uh, you can uh, show the yellow cardal one view. Show the yellow cardal one view. Table ready. Yeah, uh, epicranial. Previous epicranial or epicranial? So, Kasturi, are you going to do OCT now? Yeah, I'll do one OCT. Yeah, yeah can, can we? That, because you're already late. Can By the time you do OCT, Barua can give us a short talk and we'll come back to you. No issue, no issue, definitely. Yeah, but Barua, please go ahead with your talk quickly and Hello, then we'll go for the final result. Is it visible? Yes, uh, we are not seeing the slides. Please, we are not seeing the slides. Not yet, sir. Not yet. I'm sharing it, but sir, uh, like when you see share entire screen, click on the middle of the screen. Yes, sir. It's shared now. We can see your screen, sir. Yep. Is it visible now? Yes, yes this sir. Is Good to go. Anyway, thank you very much uh, for the opportunity. Actually, already uh, Dr. Swami has nicely elaborated regarding the bifurcation standing. Only just want to uh, uh, highlight uh, important issues. Uh, most important is the uh, always you should see the vessel size. This is very very important. You should study the vessel size, and there is a uh, no plaque shift, carina shift. All these uh, no important factors should be considered, and uh, of course. Uh, Important issue is the main main vessel standing and optimization technique like you know distal optimization technique also very very important as well as uh, proximal optimization technique we should uh, you know always analyze these things and plan out before itself and how to prevent the side branch occlusion uh, that is also important as in a single provisional stand technique like a pot side pot is a, one a good option to do and of course the best uh, two stand technique already has been discussed uh, but uh, I think whichever is the simple, whichever is the familiar to person, a particular operator, I think that should be the best in that particular moment. But uh, what uh, we have so far, we have data, of course, DK Cross has got a better score than other techniques. As you have seen that as, as, as uh, the side brands have become more and bigger and bigger, it's more important uh, to have that, you know, uh, to do the Carina shift, also very, very important in that case. And as you know that you know, uh, Carina seed, uh, this uh, most of the time uh, the side branch so once uh, after dilatation of the main branch or standing of the main branch, there is a Carina seed and there will be an anatomical compromise, which may not necessarily there will be a functional compromise. Functional compromise mostly because of the plaque shift and plaque shift mostly comes from the main branch. That we should understand that if there is a main vessel disease is there, then there are chances of plaque shift will be more especially in acute coronary syndrome, that chances would be high. So, Carina shift, although there is a 80% of the time with anatomical compromise, that, that may not be 
non non acid that uh, is a functional compromise so this anatomical and functional compromise should understand in a bifurcation te technique of course already has been you know alluded that uh, dk cross has got a better you know kind of outcome out of all these cross glute and uh, t or uh, tape techniques so that i think uh, all of us uh, familiar with that but uh, in a uh, bifurcation standing uh, always i believe that uh, if some particular no, I think technique is familiar to particular operator. I think that should be the choice in a particular situation if it is suitable. Let us say this is one case. I'm just going to a case. A 57 year old hypertensive male presented to acute uh, non steel MI. He has good LV function, good renal function. This is also very, very important to analyze uh, before doing any vibration uh, you know, kind of uh, procedures. LV function is important. At the same time, renal function is also very, very important because we need the outcome finally uh, uh, in total outcome. So this is a case uh, uh, you can see that uh, uh, there uh, is a tight uh, bifurcation lesion here. And uh, before that, there is a acute angulation with a big diagonal branch and uh, LED. It is something like a uh, Medina 111, basically. Of course, the LED is not very much disease, but uh, I think there is a disease also. And there is a uh, kind of ulcerated plaque here. And most difficult part is here is the there's, uh, there's a band. There's a band and uh, that uh, you know, entering the diagonal is, uh, it was a little difficult. You can see that the wire is uh, not easy to cross to the diagonal because of the proximal band. And there's ulcers at least. And every time you try to enter the diagonal, the wire is going to hit the ulcer. So this is the, uh, sometimes it is difficult. That is the reason uh, I think uh, we need to be very careful here because suddenly uh, uh, this wire might, uh, no, artery might get occluded. But at the same time, uh, as a bifurcation technique, uh, the rule is that you first uh, you know, enter the difficult artery, difficult branch, then go to the straight bar. But in this kind of situation where there is a chance of occlusion, when you keep on hitting this an ulcerative plaque, uh, maybe we can put on wire into the LED, then maybe uh, later on we can try to diagonal. This is a uh, kind of uh, choice to the operator. But it was a little difficult, then finally we crossed uh, to the, di the diagonal, which is more difficult uh, no, branch to enter. And uh, subsequently, we did uh, uh, in the LED also put a wire and did, uh, did uh, OCT study. OCT study basically in this kind of situation is important to you know, see the distal vessel disease, landing zone, as well as uh, kind of uh, you know, what is the uh, diameter of the distal vessel and the branch vessel and the main vessel. So this is that this helps us to select the proper stent, size of the stent and uh, length of the stent, and we can choose the procedure. This particular uh, no, uh, bifurcation has got a two equally uh, no, big branch. You can see that uh, this is diagonal, in fact, bigger than the, this uh, LED angiographically. And proximally, uh, although it should be bigger than this, actually, if you consider the two branches, this is bigger than that. So there is some disease in the proximal. That's why looking a little, long, a little uh, small is here, but it's, it is uh, bigger than that. So we thought this uh, both branches are equal. This is an ideal situation where you can go for culot, uh, you know, kind of stenting. So uh, that's what we uh, plan. Uh, we have analyzed the OCD distal LED shows around 2.7. This is a EL to EL 2.7. Uh, diagonal so is a three millimeter and the proximal is almost like a four 3.8 millimeter so this is the you know, sizes we got it uh, from OCD and uh, finally uh, we uh, uh, go to the diagonal then LED pre-dilated you can see that here and it was uh, because of the proximal band it was uh, you know, really difficult to pass the stand here as the stand is uh, not uh, no, not able to negotiate through this uh, proximal band into the LED because we thought uh, initially we planned to put a distal stand here, uh, uh, distal to the bifurcation. This LED area, we thought we'll put a 2.75 into 28 millimeter stand. So it was initially difficult, but subsequently with the body wire, we could uh, cross this and put a stand here in the distal part, uh, which was uh, deployed with a high pressure subsequently. And, uh, and uh, next, uh, next was, uh, the, uh, as you know, uh, this. Uh, uh, of, uh, of uh, the culot is the first to stand uh, the difficult uh, angulated branch. So that's why we uh, next uh, step was to stand uh, the diagonal, which is more angulated, uh, more difficult to cross. This is the three into uh, three into twenty-two millimeter uh, diagonating stand. You can see here this stand was deployed in the uh, 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 diagonal branch, and it was finally. 
now uh, deployed the high pressure with a NC balloon, three millimeter NC balloon. You can see this uh, nicely open this uh, diagonal. Then next step, of course, again uh, we need to cross the uh, this uh, this uh, uh, diagonal stand in the LED area. We we'll have to cross and go to the LED. It was uh, uh, a little difficult to cross, uh, but uh, because only difficulty here in this particular case because of the acute angulation proximally that gives uh, all the trouble all the time crossing the stand, crossing the balloon. This is a difficult part in this particular case. So it was initially difficult. And we crossed the wire, but subsequently balloon was difficult. That's why we crossed another wire uh, uh, because the balloon was not going to the first wire, which is crossed to the studs. So we uh, we uh, you know, uh, took another wire. We crossed probably another cell or same cell. We do not know, but uh, we have crossed uh, with another wire. Then subsequently, uh, the first wire we took out and through the second wire balloon went off, uh, crossed to the studs. So sometimes you, we have to do that because if a balloon is not crossing, it is very difficult. Your smallest balloon was used. It was not crossing to the first wire. There is something wrong there. So uh, that's why we put another wire and cross the struts, probably nearby struts. We try to cross the most distant struts. Then subsequently to the second second wire, we could uh, cross the balloon. So when we cross the balloon, we have uh, dilated it. Uh, then finally, we did a kissing here. Uh, to open the, uh, this uh, artery, uh, this LED well, and subsequently we put a stent. Again, it was uh, difficult again to uh, pass the stent here. As I told you, this is because if there is a bend, it will go and direct hit stent struts. So always it is difficult in a acute angulated situation. So it was a little difficult, but we, again, we had to put a body wire, put a body wire again, we put the stent here. So this is the stent, LED stent was deployed. You can see that. Uh, uh, LED stand deployed here, and this is the uh, this positioning of the stand from right from the ostium to the, the second stand overlapping here. And uh, finally, we did a kissing. Uh, then, uh, of course, we had to do a pot as it has been recommended. And uh, you can see the pot is just uh, before the carina here. And uh, this uh, on geographical result was good. Uh, there is no significant uh, you know, uh, kind of uh, Problem here, there is no significant residual. Both diagonal and LED, LED stands were you know, looking great. This final part was done with a four millimeter you know, NC balloon. So OCT, both, from both, both branches from the LED as well as from the diagonal, so was a well deployed you know, uh, stand. There is no residual with a good luminal area, well open, well deployed stand. And I just want to show the follow-up because many a time we are not able to follow up, uh, show the, show the follow-up cases in a bifurcation. This gentleman, actually, he was well for two years. After 27 months, he came again, he came presented the acute coronary. He was on follow-up. We did treadmill also. Uh, usually I do treadmill at least every six months or one year to all my cases. His treadmill was uh, normal. Uh, he came a little later. After six months, he came after the last follow-up at at the end of 27 months, he came with acute coronary syndrome. We can see here, uh, angiographically, there is a lesion there. Lady has got a tight lesion just after the, this uh, diagonal stand. So uh, this is a kind of uh, problem uh, now. Uh, but one good thing that there is a focal stenosis here. There is a possibility of some thrombus because of the acute coronary syndrome. So initially, I thought I'll go with just open with a, you know, a kind of angioscalp and uh, just uh, you know, deploy the drug, the drug some with a drug balloon and uh, leave it. But uh, uh, following uh, uh, this uh, angioscalp, uh, this angioscalp, uh, three into, I think, uh, three into three millimeter angioscalp balloon. And after that, we have uh, you know, seen that there is just a lot of haziness there. So in a LED, such a big LED, I was a little hesitant to you know, kind of leave with a drug balloon. That's why I thought, you know, go for a standing. So uh, put another stand here again. Uh, this is the second time for this gentleman, uh, three into 22 millimeter uh, drug eluting stand. This is a different uh, drug eluting stand this time, uh, not the same one. And we have deployed here, uh, three into 22 millimeter drug eluting stand. And uh, finally, uh, we uh, deployed the high pressure, uh, this at uh, 3.5. Then uh, did a kiss here uh, with the diagonal, crossing the diagonal. We did a kissing here. And 
finally, uh, there is an acceptable result, although diagonal, there is some kind of uh, you know, prolapse of the plaque. There is no obvious dissection, TME3 flow. And uh, I thought uh, this is the time to leave it uh, you know, beyond doing anything to the diagonal because already multiple, you know, a, lot of heavy, a lot of metals are there in this area. So finally, uh, this gentleman is one year since then. He's doing well. Uh, six months uh, follow up treadmill was negative. He's asymptomatic. Hope I think uh, down the line he will do well. So this is the case uh, with uh, difficult, uh, you know, uh, kind of because of the acute angulation. You can see when uh, this angle is still maintaining here. The acute angulation uh, it is a bit difficult to negotiate balloon stent and uh, through the struts of the this uh, stents because of the acute angulation. But finally, when a good result, he came with a restiness again. We treat him. So this is just I wanted to show you that very good technique. Uh, with a follow-up of two years with a restenosis and again restenting with a focal restenosis because there is some haziness we didn't uh, i didn't want to leave it a drug letting below conclusion bifurcal stenting is a, always is challenging but a single stent strategy is the best i use the best familiar two stent strategy which were we are familiar we should do at the same time improvisation is also very very important we need to inform ourselves keep on training ourselves for the uh, no, better stenting technique, like you know, DK cross, what we have discussed uh, just now, that is also really, we should know each and every steps of all techniques. With this, I thank you for your kind attention. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Barba, for an excellent illustration and uh, very good, excellent case examples. I think uh, with the, we will go for a case. We have already running late of time, so then we'll come back to a final uh, discussion. Uh, so, Dr. Sridhar Kasturi, please. Are we having Dr. Kasturi online? So I think as Dr. Ajay is contacting Dr. Kasturi, Dr. Ranjan, uh, you want to uh, say some comments on Dr. Barua's talk? Can you unmute yourself, please? Can you unmute yourself? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sangat Velo. It was a very good talk and, uh, you know, it shows the difficulties of a bifurcation stent because most of the time, in you know, uh, it's it looks very simple, but there are many times it's difficult to cross. We may have to use a buddy wire. You know, there are times even side branch, you have to use a buddy wire because, the, you know, you might be able to open the stud, but the stent doesn't go. So, um, so beautifully actually uh, described the, all those difficulty. So this uh, Dr. Barua, that uh, patient came back with a restenosis or a thrombosis after 27 months. Yeah, yeah actually uh, I could not do the OCT uh, because of the uh, simple reason I could not afford. And uh, actually he he was on uh, dual antiplatelet therapy. I do not know whether it is, uh, but he came with acute coronary syndrome and. Uh, these are not very hard. Maybe it's a thrombus. I'm not sure about that. But after after dilatation, there is haziness. So definitely, oh. I, I I thought there is trauma. That's why I had to go for standing. Second standing, yes, yes. Ajay is Kasturi. I think they joined us. Okay. I think they joined us. So, Dr. Sridhar, can you hear us? Hello. Final yeah, can we see Dr. Sridhar final OCT? I think there is a lag between our speech and his uh, reception. Little bit of plot for that too. There is a diagonal problem. I don't know if it's my screen, but it, it seems very, very dark to me. Yeah, it's dark to all of us. So <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I'm trying to dim my lights to see if I can see better. 
Iya, precisely. This is some mala position proximal, I think. Some floating struts. And just distilled to this, there seems to be some incomplete expansion. Can, can Sri Kasturi come in, please? Can you hear us? We are not able to hear you at all. This is probably the place where the two kissing balloons have come proximally. Okay. And just proximal to that, I think the pot, see the pot has to be done here again. This, okay. this has to be collected. This is elliptical deformation of the proximal part of the main branch stent. Dr. Uh, Ajay, if uh, Dr. Kasturi cannot be coming online, if I can, I can, can you please uh, summarize, get some points, summary points and summarize the case for his sake, please? I just tried to contact him on the other line and ask him if he's got anything to say. That elliptical shape is very characteristic if a proper pot is not done or cannot be done for some reason. Uh, a final Can you hear us? Which is frozen on the screen. That is the point I was trying to make. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so he was saying probably there is a little bit of mala position, and uh, I was trying to tell him that there is some incomplete expansion as well. Did he have some instability in between, sir? Pardon? Did the patient have any hemodynamic instability anywhere? No, not at all, isn't it? Yeah. No, the panel was feeling the panel was feeling that um, you know the proximal part. This appears to be the part where the two uh, balloons, the kissing balloons, have come proximally, and there may be a little bit of elliptical deformation in the proximal segment. And then the pot probably could correct this. Yeah, the pot could probably. Okay. Okay. So what he says is that a three millimeter was used, and then a three point five was used after they noticed this uh, segment of incomplete expansion. Okay. I'm sure that, but the, I, I can't see the size of the this one on the on the OCT. It, it looks like a three point five from here. There was some malapposition which probably correct you corrected along with a. Uh... How about the expansion, uh, particularly the side branch trend because of the calcium? So, Dr. Shridhar, did we do a OCT into the diagonal as well? Maybe we can see the bifurcation view if the if anybody from this one is there, you can show the bifurcation view of the reconstruction of the bifurcation of the diagonal and the LED. So this is what yeah, so this is the probably the part where the two <clears throat> Where he comes back a little more proximally. This part is okay. This is okay. This is okay. This is okay. The uh, the this the pay, place where patient had a mala position. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the so one one can yeah. see the mala position here, I think, in the proximal yeah, segment. Yeah. Very nice. So probably this is the segment where the two kissing balloons would have come and the mala position induced proximally by the over expansion in this part. Yeah, that, that's the right mechanism. And then uh, you're corrected with a 3.5 after that. Yeah. So this looks like 1, 2, 3. Yes, 3.5. I think it's almost 4 actually. 3.5? Yeah, 3.5 is okay. No, 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 we got the area of 3.5. No, no, with the 3.5, definitely it will be around 3.5. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So, Dr. Sengot, well, anything else we need to ask you? Yeah, so, I think we've got a great result. The edges are fine. There's no flap or anything anywhere yeah. in the district. Yeah. Edges yeah. are fine. No edge detection. Yeah. And, uh, 
Okay, and, and uh, actually also landed in a very nice landing zone. Nice landing zone, yeah. And this nice area zone. we got around two point four area uh, diameter, sorry. And uh, the expansion is about ninety percent, isn't it? If I'm safe, if I'm yeah, right, ninety yeah. percent, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Okay, I think we're fine. It's a great result, Dr. Kasuri. Congratulations for excellent demonstration of a DK. I'm very sorry for the poor uh, audio-visual transmission, but uh, you are able to uh, hear my voice, I think. But uh, from your side, I'm unable to listen to you very properly. Uh, it was a nice demonstration of, uh, of a DK crush. Uh, I think it was uh, uh, OCP before, after, and how do you plan, and step-by-step uh, -step DK crush, and final OCP, main branch and side branch. Good demonstration, and I think uh, it's a very useful to all the participants. Any questions from any of the panelists and the experts? Very nice. Okay, though one one little point, Dr. Sridhar. Whenever one yeah. does a very very distal vessel, do you find uh, not find that it is sometimes easier to do a non DK crush? I mean, DK crush is very nice for a proximal bifurcation, a left main bifurcation, or an LED D1, or a very early OM and circumflex. But the more distal one goes into the circulation, the more difficult it begins becomes to no, deliver actually, all the. Here, D tap is a nice option. Why have not opted is primarily there is a lot of calcium, right. and at the same time, osteum is too critical. Actually, right. compared to LED, diagonal is too critical. Right. So if I do the otherwise, I would have kept the gel balloon technique because definitely side branch closes once I do the LED stenting. Right. So again, crossing is difficult because there is at this time the calcium is there. Yeah. Cross that one is very tough. Yeah. So that's yeah. the reason I opted the first product the side branch. Other uh, without side branch, if I do definitely the closure is very very high because the angle is uh, uh, more than fifty and at the same time even length is less than one point seven five mm and uh, very critical lesion and at this time the calcium. So because all these factors, uh, I thought if I do these. Straight uh, provisional stenting closure is though segment it's a very short segment region only, right. but closure is very mo uh, very high. Imminent. So that's the reason I opted for the first two patterns. Mini crush also we can do. Problem is mini crush the mesh rate is more compared to DK crush. So though it slightly requires more number of steps, it uh, requires more time, but uh, it's worth spending time because we can give a better long term results based upon that only uh, definitely crossing particularly crossing through the smaller osteum is very different compared to large osteum <laughs> because all these so many sets are there you have to enter through the 2.25 mm diameter uh, suppose it's the same like lcx LM, lmc bifurcation like lcx more than 2.53 mm it's easy to cross mm. because sets are very wide but no, i think points are very well made sir yeah. very elegant yeah. demonstration of uh, complex technique in a distal circulation. Very, very nicely done. Excellent result. Very, very nice uh, OCT before and after. Thank you very much, sir. Thank Excellent you very result. much. Sir. Beautiful. I think we deserve a big hand. Yeah, absolutely. He is with me for a uh, uh, three years. So, Dr. Raja Ram, they are all associates. And Venu, my chief technician, and uh, Swarupa, Praveen, all technicians, they work hard. And uh, everything went on well. It's like a team effort, and uh, their contribution is uh, measurable. Because so, of applause them, from you. everybody, sir. Lots Thank of applause you. from everybody. Thank you, Thank you very much. Sir. Thank you, Dr. the and Thank the team. So, so, let's have the final Q and A. Is there any questions left? I, I can't see anything. Uh, uh, is there anything left uh, from the audience? There's yeah. one, Dr. Sangatwelu, where the question is, I think, left main bifurcation, do you prefer to keep the uh, main stent or stem of left main? Mm -hmm. Okay. See, it all depends upon the, the length of the lesion, the length of the left main. Generally, we try to cover the ostium because it's going to be a very short uh, segment. And we need to consider, when you do a pot, we need to have sufficient length proximally to have at least 8 millimeters. So considering all that, we generally want to uh, to stent the ostium. But if, if you have a long left main and you have a disease-free ostium and you have quite a length, disease-free length of the left main beyond the ostium, I think we don't have to always stent the ostium. So I think uh, that should be fine. And now, uh, uh, finally, uh, one message from uh, each of the faculty and then I will close the session. But Ranjan, uh, we want to yeah. say some concluding message. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, this is, uh, first of all, it's a very interesting uh, 
talk you know you can never miss a bifurcation cto you can decide to do or not to do but bifurcation is you know uh, up to 20 to 30 percent lesions are bifurcation so i think the key point is what we which all of us are making is provisional is a preferred strategy as much as possible left main non left main in our mind itself you should divide whether you are treating with the left main bifurcation or a non left main non left main almost predominantly probably it's preferred to have a single stent or uh, you know provisional uh, stenting it's important to master as we have been uh, discussing i think one of the procedures is dk crush which we may have to you know have a lower threshold to master yeah, yeah. and dr kalra yeah i totally agree see uh, as he mentioned dr shetty mentioned there is no escape from bifurcations there is then you may escape from ctos but uh, there is no escape because uh, it's a it's an everyday occurrence and uh, it's very important as was brought out by dr chadda and dr swami to a be familiar with the physiology and the anatomy and b strategize accordingly to marry up the two and this has to be done right in, at the outset uh, and also be flexible for any change halfway through or sometime during the procedure uh, we had a barrage of information today from excellent speakers from uh, fantastic examples in fact uh, i would say it was a bombing raid by uh, some of the speakers uh, and uh, fantastic uh, in fact one would say one still learns uh, every day and i spent um, a very nice uh, two and a half hours so nothing more to add everything has been brought out i think about bifurcations thank you and uh, dr barua yeah i think uh, it's a great session uh, just uh, one thing i want to inform specifically for the juniors bifurcation is a, such a complex uh, kind of uh, you know, lesion and uh, you need to know the technique very well and before that i think we need to understand the bifurcation that is most important first uh, theoretically we should understand what is bifurcation as well as anatomically that is uh, i think uh, number one uh, kind of uh, important issue in uh, doing bifurcation stenting first you understand learn bifurcation physiologically and anatomically then i think uh, all of us uh, as uh, dr ranjan uh, dr swami has told uh, provisional is uh, the one of the best technique and many a time we can get away with the provisional stenting that we should master we know each and every you know aspect as uh, uh, dr sangarabhu told is provisionally not a single stem technique many a time we have to go for a second stem in that so we need to know that particular technique of course dk cross being a you know kind of uh, new technique uh, more you know kind of efficient technique we all of us learn dk cross we should be familiar with dk cross that's what like and uh, dr ajay i i want your specific comments on the importance of imaging and physiology uh in in bifurcation and then i will give the final take okay sir so i think imaging and physiology have changed the way in which we look at uh, the entire coronary tree over the last uh, decade or so i think physiology has uh, a role as far as deciding when to do and you know which lesion to address in fact assessment of lesions now we are doing a small study in which we are trying to assess all the three vessels regardless of what the angiogram shows and sometimes it throws up surprises in both ends of the spectrum it is absolutely important and mandatory to do the safest and the most appropriate procedure and physiology is what helps us to make this decision the way in which once we decide that we have to do it how to do it is going to be given to us by the imaging especially in segments where large uh, parts of myocardium are supplied like left main bifurcations and large bifurcations in the proximal coronary tree imaging helps us to decide what is the problem what length we need to use what what size we need to use what diameter we need to use and what strategy is best in an ideal world every single step should be guided by imaging and i think the time has come when probably most of us have to make it a part of the routine angioplasty as well i think the time is not very far off probably maybe a little bit into the future where in every single bifurcation must have imaging before and after because after all we are in it to give our patients the safest and the best possible long term results and if we are going to try and challenge the surgeons which is what you challenge or beat them or give them better care it's not about challenge or beat it's about giving the best result we need to have whatever information we can get 
to try and give the best possible result. I think imaging is the way forward, especially for left main modifications. And um, I think all the strategies we have discussed. Yes. And, uh, yeah. Thank you. I think uh, we had a wonderful session. And uh, I just want to uh, key take home. Uh, so uh, try to keep the strategy as simple as possible. Uh, understand the anatomy and uh, give importance to lesion preparation. I think which shown by all the speakers preparation before bifurcation is very important. And then uh, choose the proper strategy. Be familiar with the common uh, bifurcation techniques and uh, follow meticulously. The steps, if you follow meticulously, you can be definitely successful. The pot, kissing balloon, the proper techniques as we discussed. If you do it and the wiring, and I think uh, we'll be definitely successful. And use uh, both FFR and uh, OCT and uh, imaging whenever needed. And we'll definitely be a, a finally good, we did a good result. And I would like to thank everyone. I think Dr. Ranjan, Dr. Swami, Dr. Chara, and uh, Dr. Marwa, Dr. Kalra, Dr. Uh, all of them, Dr. Ka Dr. Deeman Kahali. I think all of us, uh, all of them contributed immensely for making this uh, greatly successful. And uh, I think we have already gone beyond time. And I think that have, uh, the audience are still uh, patiently being there throughout the program. And as we are now heading for a big storm in Chennai with the thunder landing, uh, I, guess, I think uh, we I think we'll close the session. And uh, thank you all and see you again. Uh, thanks. Thanks to you. Thank all you. Thank you very much. Yes, thank yes, you. Excellent, Excellent moderation, Dr. Sangatovelo. Huh? Nobody could have done it better. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Good night. Always, I, I always remember Madhuri Meenakshi whenever I see you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good night. Bye. 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 Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.